what's up y'all welcome to game day with heavy cardboard where we teach play and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games war games 18xx today we are featuring a solo war game uh cruel necessity published by victory point games and designed by john welch so yeah i'm excited about this i hope you guys are as well so welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact i'm your host edward euler and it's just me because it's a solo war game today so it's an early saturday morning hope you guys are excited about this i'm looking forward to it um i've decided i think we're only going to play the first of the three uh because otherwise this would end up probably being a four plus hour stream and you don't want that and i don't want that so let's let's not so we're going to play the first of three civil wars so this game is about the English Civil Wars. It takes place, or at least the, the prologue, the, the first Civil War that we're going to be playing today is going to be 1640 to 1644. So I'm looking forward to that. As far as the teach goes, I've decided what I'm going to do is, I'm, instead of doing a full front-loaded uh, teach, I think what I'm going to do is give an overview of how the game plays and then go into the game and actually kind of teach as we go because I feel like it's going to make a lot more sense seeing as it's just me today and not a room full of folks as well as y'all. I thought that would be the best way to do it and as we encounter things, go ahead and teach those things as we go. So that said, um, I'll bring the camera down uh, on me as well as the chat just during the overview. And then after that, I'll bring everything up and we'll get going together. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this. I hope you guys are as well. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So let me scoot over here for to be in front of everything. So Cruel Necessity, like I said, it is the English Civil Wars, a solitaire war game um, that simulates the military, political, and religious struggles of the English Civil Wars. So I will be attempting to stop the advance of all four armies bent on destroying Parliament and Puritanism. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, I represent Parliament as well as Puritanism down here. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and describe what it is you guys are looking at to begin with. So, we have four armies out here. We have the Army of Scotland, we have the Army of Ireland, we have the North and the West armies, all converging, trying to go ahead and hit me in London. London must be preserved at all costs for me. All right, I am the, as I mentioned, the Parliament or Puritanism player. So I am represented by blue, hence the blue shirt today. These four fortresses are controlled by me or uh, friendly to me, as you were, and will work as buffers to slow down the invading horde of these four armies. You'll notice that the king has two of the fortresses to start out the game. Also, over here, we have six different tracks. We have three tracks up top and three tracks down here at the bottom. And we also have, think of them if you remember back in school, grades A, B, C, D, and F. Things that are beneficial for me are going to be higher letter grades, so up here. So obviously, I want to push the three opposing sides, which are, to begin with, Ireland, the monarchy, and Catholicism, I want to push those as far up as possible. Good things will happen when I do. And as far as for my markers, Scotland, Parliament, and Puritanism, I also want to push these up. So up is good, down is bad. You'll also notice that there are a group of arrows, either red arrows down or blue arrows up. Those are victory point markers. Red arrows are negative victory point markers. We don't want those. We start out with quite a few, as you can see, four there, one there, two there, among others. We don't want that. We want more blue arrows up. So as we push these, you'll notice that getting the Marnaki all the way up to the top is a good thing for me. Then also we have the armies. All four of these armies are going to slowly, hopefully slowly, uh, advance down 
into these numbered areas. So take, for instance, the Scottish army up here. It goes from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. And all of the armies have their own numbers like that. So we have areas 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 for all of them. And as they push down, the Irish are going to negatively impact these tracks with the Irish Troubles. The Scottish will, when they get down here, then kind of give the northern invading army kind of a double move potentially and will help push them further south. And then the West Army is going to converge over here, eventually trying to take over London. So my job is to push all of these armies back as best I can, or at least hold them at bay, and as well as pushing these tracks up as we go along. Now, in the full campaign, I should say, it, if, if at any point any of these four markers are in their lowest boxes, so in the Fs, if any four of those happen to be in the F at the end, uh, the, I, I lose the game immediately. If I lose London, that's not good as well. So, what else are we looking at? So we have available achievements. These are going to be victory point cards as well as beneficial cards that come out from this main deck. So this main deck that we have here, it's preceded with this one card here and this card number 27 at the bottom. The intervening 25 cards are just randomly shuffled up and placed in here. So we know what's going to happen, we just don't know the order in which these things are going to happen. Some of these are going to be events, some of these are going to be achievements. As we put achievements out here, I'll be able to hopefully purchase them, which those are going to be, uh, the requirements to be able to do so is getting certain one of these tracks up to certain levels, as well as possibly winning battles, which we will talk about here shortly, as well as spending zeal points. So zeal points here, this zeal point track is essentially my available actions or my, my action points that I can spend on a given turn. So I start out with five, as you can see here, so five zeal points or five action points in which to be able to fight back the horde as well as push these up as well as fight any negative markers that may come into play as we go along. All right. So the game takes place essentially over three phases in each round. The first phase is the event phase. We're going to flip over this top card, and if it's an achievement, we're going to put it up into one of the top three spaces. If it's not an achievement, we're going to flip it over and put it here, and then activate, do whatever the events say, top to bottom, basically left to right. I, if multiple achievements come out, we keep bringing out cards until an event takes place. Then once we entirely resolve this event card, then we get into the action phase. And the action phase is basically where I get to actually respond to the various negative things that have happened. And there's a pretty good player aid over on BGG which shows the available actions that I can do. Everything from infusing zeal or being able to give a plus one to one of my actions out here purchase these achievement cards, campaign against armies to push them back, or besiege fortresses or to boost up my own fortresses and get them to have higher strength value, as well as revolts will pop up, engage in politics. That's trying to boost these up here. And last but not least, declare desperate times, which is basically give myself an extra action point as we go along. Then finally, after that, the third phase is the end of times phase. If you do not control London here, i.e. this is red, or four of these tracks are at, at the F level, I lose immediately. That's not good. Or if the final card has been uh, completed, so in our case, card number 27, then we check victory conditions and see either how badly I lost or how well I won. And then finally, there's housekeeping, which is just for getting ready for the next round. So we haven't talked about this battle board at all over here. The nice thing about this state, States of Siege uh, series is that it's very procedural, very sequential, which 
works for me, especially when it comes to solo games. And the actual sequence of battle is actually shown right here. And honestly, it's really simple. And I think it would be best if we just go ahead and do it when we get to our first battle. I'm sure there will be a number of these as we go along. So, with that said, I think we go ahead and just get into it. What do you all say? Obviously, you see a dice tray over here. This game has a ton of dice rolling in this. It's very simplified and it's single or double rolls. But outside of that, pretty, pretty simple. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into it, all right? I guess the one other thing that I can mention before we start here is all of these fortresses have these little clock faces, for lack of a better way to put it. And you'll notice that there's a little dot. It's either going to be a red dot in this case or a blue dot here. And what that is is think of these as clicks, being able to click it up. So this is the strength of the fortress uh, in which I will have to either roll ho hopefully higher than to be able to uh, be able to besiege when it comes to these or be able to boost up and fight back the horde. These are these are going to work as buffers, work as things to slow the invading armies down because they have to besiege these fortresses. They don't want a uh, opponent held fortress in their rear, therefore they're going to besiege these. Once they turn it, then they will continue their advance. So they're roadblocks or, or, or I guess, speed bumps that I want to uh, uh, keep in their way. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to go ahead and read the flavor text on most, if not all of these. So indulge me, if you will. I figure if we're going to play a solo war game between y'all with me, hopefully you're you're betting on me. I would bet on the game, honestly, but hopefully you're on my side. So it kind of uh, engrosses us in the story. So here we go. The English Civil War, 1640 to 1644, the prologue. For 15 years, Charles' subjects became more alienated by his religious policies and desire to rule without parliament. The more zealous Protestants or Puritans imagined the existence of a royal plot aimed at restoring the Catholic faith in England and the destruction of the people's liberties. Charles' attempt to introduce a new prayer book to Scotland in 1637 provoked furious resistance. His response to crush the Scots by force went disastrously wrong, compelling him to summon the English and English Parliament in October. 1640 to raise money in support of his war. Once seated, Parliament assailed Charles with, an, with angry, angry compliments about his policies. At first, the king had few supporters, but his Puritan members pushed for wholesale reform of the church. Religious traditionalists uh, became alarmed, and Charles found himself at the head of a swelling political con constituency. Then, in 1641, the Catholics of Ireland rose up in arms, brutally killing many hundreds of the English and Scottish Protestants who had settled in Ireland. The rebellion caused panic in England, making it harder than ever for a political compromise to be reached and the nation's problems solved. England was rapidly dividing into two powerful armed camps. So, all right, there we go. Uh... Yeah, it's me or the game, and I like the game's chances, to be honest with you. Also, I'm going to be using uh, the Heavy Cardboard Challenge coin as a reminder for to not forget whenever we have battles. Battles will kind of intercede, and I will keep this as a marker, as a reminder of things that so I don't forget. And I'm sure y'all in the peanut gallery will help me out with that as well. That said, let's go ahead and get started. So here we go. Card number one, which will always be the first event. August 28, 1640. Needing to secure funds to raise a new army to stop the Scottish invasion after the defeat of the English army at Newburn, and Newburn is right up here, by the way, King Charles calls for a session of Parliament. All right, so anything you see in gray is going to be flavor text, and then we're going to resolve all of the events top to bottom, left to right. So it is the event phase, so we did not have any achievements, so we can just go ahead and go down. So we have activating an army. So the first army and the only army for the first turn that gets activated is Scotland. So armies are going to do 
all of these in this order, or the first that they can do, okay? The first is recover from disorder. Well, if the army is disordered, then the first thing it would do is, or the thing that it would do as its activation is flip over. But it's not disordered, so we continue on. Then the second thing is su suppress a clubman revolt. Well, there are none of these clubman revolt markers out here, so we can just skip that. So we keep moving. Besiege a fortress. Well, there is no fortress in the Highlands, so we keep moving, and that is advance. So the Scottish army now advances here to region number four, and that is it. Easy enough. Cool. The next one is we're going to move into the political phase here of the event. So this says drop the monarchy down one or strengthen the monarchy one. So it moves now down there. That is less than ideal. There we go. All right. Uh, and this says a diminutive Archbishop Laud attempts to impose a new Anglican prayer book on the Scots, but the Scottish bishops strongly oppose its introduction, which then further strengthens the monarchy, which by default weakens the parliament. The last one, which is the, uh, the religious, I'm sorry, that was politics. This is the religious one, the Scottish Kirk. Scottish Kirk, or the church, uh, signs the covenant to reject the books of common prayer. So Parliament gets a plus one uh, DRM. Awesome. So I get a plus one here. There we go. So anything that I need to do there, I'm going to get plus one on that roll there for that. Awesome. So there's my event. That is done. So now we move into the second phase. The second phase is the action phase. I have five action points worth to be able to spend. So again, I can infuse zeal, which to boost any one action, so I could, these are cumulative. This would actually flip over to the DRM side, and I could add it to maybe make it easier for me to be able to boost up Parliament. Not a terrible idea. No achievements to purchase, so we can th skip that. Campaign an enemy army. Well, I could try and push the Scots back to the Highlands. I would need to roll above a three in which to do so. So I got a 50-50 shot to be able to do that. Um, that's an option. Uh, or I could actually try and boost up my vari the various fortresses, which we're probably going to do some of that. There's no revolts. There's no devil tree markers. I don't need to do any of that. So basically, all I'm really looking to do is fortify uh, fortresses, possibly try and, I can't mess with Oxford yet, possibly try and work on Dublin, uh, or push politics. And to be honest with you, I think, hmm, I cannot fortify this one because the army is actually currently in Scotland. So honestly, I think what we're going to do, I think we're actually going to start off trying to boost up Hull, I think is what we'll do. So we're going to try and fortify a, a fortress. That's going to cost me one zeal point. So we're going to drop that down there and it automatically... So here, hold on. The prerequisite, let me go through that. I guess I haven't explained that. So to fortify a port, uh, fortress, army unit must be in a higher number area. Well, Hull is in area number three, whereas the Army of the North is in Durham, so which is five. So we're good there. There are no revolt markers, or those must be in higher number areas as well. So we're good to go. Awesome. And so I don't have to actually roll on this one. So in order to do that, I spend one marker and I bump it up one click. You're allowed a maximum of two clicks per fortress on a given turn. So you know what? Let's go ahead and bump that up one more. So you'll notice that it went from three to three, but it's the higher of the two, th or actually three threes, I apologize. So there we go. So that's two of those. Um, and you know what? I think actually I'm going to go and spend one. Yeah, I'm going to spend one to go ahead and bump Bristol up 
as well to try and protect that. So try and slow those down a little bit. And I think my last two zeal points, I'm going to actually try and engage in politics. Okay, cool. So that said, to engage in politics, whatever box I'm trying to push up, I need to roll whatever number it is above it. So for instance, I have the plus one DRM, so why not go ahead and try and bump up Parliament? So normally I would have to roll above a three, but in this case, I only need to roll above a two. So a three, four, five, or six. My die is the blue die, so go ahead. I will spend one and we're going for Parliament. That is not a good start. I failed. Okay, no effect. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and push that one more time as well. We'll try again. <sighs> Not a good start. We're done. All right. That is the action phase. That was a hashtag roll better, apparently. So there's that. So we move into end of time. So we check the game. Are any of these four and have I lost or or have I lost London? No. So we move on. Housekeeping. Remove any temporary markers. Well, that was useless, wasn't it? Uh, there's that. Okay, now I gain zeal points. So how many zeal points do I get? Well, do I control London? Yes. Well, that gives me three zeal points right there. Then one for each of Hull, Oxford, and Bristol. Well, I don't own Oxford, but I do have Hull and Bristol, so that's going to be one more apiece there. And is Catholicism in the highest box? If so, I would get plus one zeal. It is not. Is Puritanism in the bottom box? No, but if it were, I would lose one. So, hence why I started with five zeal. All right. Uh, no, and the lids, the, the lip on this is so small. I'm, I'm going to count it if it falls outside the box, Scott. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of the first round. So there you go. Real simple, right? All right, let's go ahead and move into the next round and hopefully try and imbue some, some good juju for the, uh, for the dice. All right. And Anthony, I don't blame you for uh, picking the game on this. So I did truly randomize this deck, so I do not know what is coming. So here we go. All right, so we have another event. All right, so we have June 2nd, 1642, and obviously these are not all going to be in chronological order because only the first and the last card are, uh, are seated in a certain order. In response to attacks on Hull by royalist forces, members of parliament approved the 19 propositions granting themselves the power to govern England and respond to the threat. All right, so here we go. So we have, an, uh, we're going to activate two armies. We're going to activate Ireland, and then we're going to activate Scotland. So Ireland is pretty simple. We are just going to add, drop this down to Munster into zone four. All right, so the Irish are done. Then we go Scotland. Well, Scotland, the first thing is besieging a fortress. So they're going to roll twice. And then the... Uh, fortress combat value has to be rolled higher than that number. So they're going to roll twice. So they need to roll higher than two and it drops it in clicks every time they succeed and they get two rolls. So they want a three or higher. All right, we fought off the first one. That's awesome. Second one, um, that was a colossal, colossal fail. By the way, Regardless of DRMs in this game, a natural six is always a success, a success and a natural one is always a failure. Uh, so that said, they do bump that down one click. So that is the activation of Scotland. Boom. Then besiege or fortify Hull. Well, in this case, we get to... Uh, You know what? Actually, I need to look something up real quick. A moment. I need to make sure that the besiege or fortify is only if they are in that area. And I do not believe since they are there that they that triggers, but I want to double check that.
No, that is not true. Besiege your fortify a fortress. That's right. Certain cards directly state besiege your fortify X. Regardless of the location of the invading army in the region, they do um, because... So it's a normal siege. So two rolls for them against holes. So all of a sudden, I'm really glad that I fortified holes. So they need to roll a four, five, or six, and they get two rolls. Well, there's a failure for the first one, and the second one is a four. Unfortunately, that clicks it down there. But I am glad that I went ahead and did that to fight off that a little bit, or at least slow it down. So regardless of where they are. So that is done. Next, we move into the middle one. So here we go. We Parliament refuses to align Church of England with the Scottish Pre Presbyterianism. You can force parliaments to impose Presbyterianism, and if I do, I would drop Puritanism down to the F box. But Scotland would go up too. Ah, oh boy. What do y'all think? Should we? Hmm. Do we, do we force Parliament to impose Presbyterianism? I'll, I'll wait for you guys, your guys' thought, and take a drink. We're doing Earl Grey this morning. Yeah, I'll leave it up to y'all. So the first two in any direction. So you guys answer. Let me know. So Puritism would drop down to the F box, but Scotland would jump up two spots. Not terrible. Not a bad idea at all, actually. Pierre says yes. Desmond says yes. All right, first two, we said we're going to. So Puritanism drops down and Scotland moves up to, yeah. all right, cool. So then over on the far right track, the king was considered ineffective because he surrounded himself with papists uh, and freely dispensed letters of grace, a sort of royal pardon in advance. So we can drop either monarchy or Catholicism down one. So if we drop monarchy, revolts and deviltry are strengthened, which we don't have to deal with yet. Yet, but if we do, gee, I think we go ahead and drop Catholicism here because it's going to be a roll of three either way, so why not? Let's go ahead and drop that one down. Boom, done. All right, so back to the action phase. All right, exactly. And, and uh, Anthony kind of has it right. So we have five zeal points. We're going to get Puritanism out of here. We're going to go ahead and try and bump that up to start. So we're going to spend one. We could spend a zeal point to get a plus one on any one of these things. But I think we're going to be okay. We need to roll a two or higher. We'll go ahead and just do a normal roll in this case. All right. Puritanism back out of the black or out of the red. All right. So there's that. Uh, all right, so what do we want to do at this point? I, I kind of like the idea because we are at our final click here in Edinburgh. Um, I kind of like the idea of trying to push the Scots back. At least give it two shots to try and push them back. Um, we could also get a plus one to being able to push them back if we want. What do you think? I think we're going to... I don't want to spend the zeal. We need to roll a 4, 5, or 6. I'm feeling confident. I feel like we're going to be able to push them back. So we're pushing the Scots out. Awesome. Roll a 4, 3, get out. Go back to the Highlands. Awesome. So that was a good success because now we can go ahead and, in my opinion, I think we spend two points here to go ahead and go click and click and fortify that, that fortress a little bit to slow them down. So we're all 
All of those are at three. We have one zeal point left to go. Um, what do we think we should do with this? We could start getting some victory points here. Mm. We could further try and weaken the Scottish army, but I feel like they're, they're pushed back and they're at bay for right now. So I'm thinking we go ahead and try and try and push some of this stuff up that's in the uh, trail. Well, actually, these are lower rolls. Do we help ourselves or hurt uh, the other side a little bit? I now all of a sudden understand how Rado struggles with uh, his decision making when it's just him on camera. Oh, that's nice. Good timing on that uh, Aquana. <laughs> exactly, Tony, says a true Scott. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and bump up Parliament. Let's go ahead and or attempt to. So we need to roll above a three. So we need a four or higher with our final zeal point. Ah, we failed. Oh, wait, wait. No, it's, it must be higher than that number. Just checking. Yep, it has to always has to be higher, not equal to. So we failed. But you know what? Overall, I'd say that was a pretty successful term. We pushed the Scots back to the Highlands where they uh, belong. And then we bumped uh, uh, the fortress there a couple times. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So we go into, we're not losing. So we go into housekeeping. Remove any temporary markers. Well, there are none. And what do we get? The exact same five zeal points so there we go so we go into the next round we flip the event card and here we go oh wow this is going to be awesome july 2nd 1644 a combined army of scottish covenanters and english parliamentarians defeat prince rupert's royalist forces cromwell leads the decisive battle winning cavalry charge so welcome oliver cromwell so we have a red uh, pikeman and a red cannon. So temp, what this should have been, the cannon should be over here to show that you're going to resolve the battle first. But it says receive prior to the battle. I get Ironside and I get Cromwell. That is fantastic news. So up here we get Ironsides and we get Oliver Cromwell. That is great. And now we're going to have our first uh, battle. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the process on how this works, okay? All right, so, and we'll just go through how this says. So designate which royal army in England this battle is against, the north or the west. That army is the one affected by the outcome. Well, looking around here, um, these guys out here in Cornwall or the north up here in Durham, and we're going to go ahead and fight the ones in the north in Durham. So we're going to tap them to show that this battle is going to impact the North either positively or negatively, depending on the outcome of this battle. So it's not going to have anything to do with the West. So we've decided that. Then I may commit any available named units that I desire on the parliamentary side, that's these guys that we just got, uh, to this side of the dis battle display map. So let me talk about those. So we have a display map here, which is going to have four pikemen or four uh, parliamentary musket and pike units out here. Those are going to be randomly drawn from this pile. And they range from all the way down to one to I believe as high as five. Then there are cavalry that are going to be flanked here. And the cavalry are a little bit, they range, I'll be honest, I don't know what the range is on those. I wanna say it's two to five, one to five, somewhere in there as well. Well, you'll notice that I have a couple of named now cavalry units. So what these mean is they're stronger and they're, they give awesome bonuses and, and if you're, Cro or for Cromwell at least, and they're going to help out whichever uh, side, the left or the right side, if you're looking at the battle, left and right side. Then we're going to randomly put out the same over here for the, uh, for the Royal Army side. The thing is though, if these guys are defeated, it's possible if then at the end I roll a one or a two, they are permanently removed from the game. Well, you know, 
it does seem like a thematic card, so let's go ahead and just throw them all out there. So we're going to go ahead and put Cromwell on the left, Ironside on the right, or Ironside's on the right, and then we're going to fill this in with four random units. And the reason they're random units is because, you, for the most part, these were... Uh, they didn't know what kind of, these were untrained armies, so they didn't know what kind of fight shape these guys were going to be in. Usually the royalists were a little bit stronger, um, so, but not always. Uh, they may be a little bit more trained, at least until the, uh, the new army comes out, if it does. So, we're randomly throwing those out, so let's see what we're up against to start. All right, so we have a weak cavalry there. Oof, a strong, that's a pretty strong side right there. Oh, boy, I need to draw better. Wow. So we have, you'll notice that this is going to take place first, then this, then these two, then these two versus the matching side. So the iron sides has a pretty, uh, pretty low fight here. So pretty big distinction. That's awesome. Cromwell also has a pretty big uh, gap. So the third one though. Oh, yes. So it's nine versus eight. That's an awesome start. And then we have eight here versus seven. I'll take that. And then if Cromwell can defeat the Royalist Cavalry here, he's actually going to give a bonus to this side. So that is fantastic. I'm really, really happy about that result. So we random, I, I guess I went ahead, draw random units, for, uh, turn them all face up. Okay, so we've done that. Now, for each event, well, you'll notice that no tile here says event. So we're not going to draw any of the event cards there. Um, we would draw that, we would resolve any red or possibly keep any green, but we're going to skip that for now. Then, resolve each section in order, first through four. So, again, first, second, third, then fourth, there, by adding a die roll to the total combat value on each side and comparing the two sums. So, let's go ahead and do it. We're starting out the first battle. We have Ironsides versus the two-value Royalist Cavalry. And we want a difference of plus two. So right now we're starting at plus three. And we succeed. So we actually have eight to three. That is a success. So when it's a success, we go ahead and take our side and put it wherever it would end up being. Well, he won his. So he goes into the victory box. Yes. Awesome start. There we go. So then we have Cromwell here. Now, I should also point out that back here, before we get started, technically, I'm supposed to declare whether or not I want the plus one strength here to be able to be put on any one unit out here. And honestly, I feel... Mm, so I'm a little bit nervous all of a sudden because the Royalist Cavalry is so strong do we want to head, go ahead and spend one zeal point to make this a seven to four so that we offset any negative die roll? Because on his flip side, he will give a plus three if he wins, making that 10 versus eight if he wins. But right now, to win, as always, it has to be a plus two. Otherwise, it goes into the draw, and Cromwell would not be victorious, so he wouldn't get the plus three to this. I think it's worth it to go ahead and hedge our bets. So we're actually going to go a plus one on Cromwell. So that's going to be seven versus four. And it's a good thing we did. So that's 11 to nine. Excellent, excellent choice. So this marker then, for all intents and purposes, will go back. That was an excellent choice. Normally, he will go up to the victory box. But however, first, we flip that bad boy over and we're going to put it onto his side. And there was one really interesting thing here that I read when I was going through this that I wanted to talk about regarding Cromwell specifically and battles. And um, if you'll indulge me a moment... 
Okay, right here. So, it says that, for a historical note, in the battles of this era, victorious cavalry units typically abandoned the fighting to charge forward and loot the enemy's camp, becoming an undisciplined rabble in the process, or pursued the enemy cavalry away from the battlefield. In either case, their part on the battlefield was over. So in other words, once these guys have done their one part of fighting, they're done for the battle, hence why Ironsides just comes out. However, not Cromwell's cavalry. Once victorious on a wing of the battle line, they would turn inward and support the infantry units on their flank, which would repeatedly lead to decisive results. And my question was, why wouldn't you do that all the time, regardless? I don't know. It's just good on him. That's what you should be doing. So we now have 10 verses 8 here. But first, we have to do the third so, 9 verses 8. Wow, we are on fire! So, 9, 6, that's 15 verses 11. Very nice. So, that means both of these units go up to the victory box. Cromwell's going to join them. If we can win this, this is going to be a major victory for the parliamentarians. And this is awesome. So... We have 10 versus 8. Come on, don't fail me now. Boom! All right. So we are at 16 versus 12. So we succeeded. So that means we had a massive, decisive victory. A moment. I want to relish this. This might not happen again all day. So this might truly be the highlight of my entire day. I'm going to take a moment. And how you like that, Anthony? Hmm? <laughs> All right. I am really, really excited about this. All right. So now it's a victory. So whatever box victory, draw, or defeat that has the most of my units, that is what happens. Well, obviously, this is a major victory. So after the first three units are here, then the other three are going to gain me one benefit point for every unit. So after the first three, so that's going to be a total of three benefit points. So that benefit point, we then reference this chart. And I can mix and match these however that I want. So one benefit point, I can equals a zeal point. I can spend that if I want, all right? Two benefit points adjust any one political track up one or one fortress marker in the affected region by one click. Awesome. Or I could choose two, to spend two benefit points to a minus one strength counter for the rest of the round like so, which you'll notice we still have to come back. The north gets two advances forgot to do this, and the West will get one advance. So that's something to consider. Or I could spend three, uh, all three benefit points to spend a, uh, to, to give it a minus two strength marker instead. Well, let's see, what do we want to do? I think we're going to go ahead and adjust a political track. Honestly, hmm. So looking at this, we could push the monarchy because that's kind of a tough roll, right? To get a four, the other four would be here. And why not spend the two to go ahead and bump the monarchy to get it a little bit safer? Since I don't have any achievements that I'm really aiming for right now, let's go ahead and try and just protect myself. So let's go ahead and spend two benefit points for that. And then I have one benefit point left. So let's go ahead and bump that up to offset the, uh, the strength marker that we purchased for Cromwell. So that is my three there. Because uh, there is nobody down here in the defeat box for a named unit, either their side or our side, these guys safely fight or live to fight another day. These guys will then come down here. I'll go ahead and kind of scramble those up. There we go. All right. So that is the battle. Awesome. Pretty, pretty, pretty happy about that. All right. 
Thank you, thank you. All right, so now we go back to this. We have finished the battle, which is the red, the tactical battle, which again, that should technically be over here because you do top to bottom, left to right. So then the north advances twice. So that affected the north, but we chose not to do any of these So for the benefit points, so they advance twice. So it goes one there, and then it's going to go one there. Okay, so the north is done. The west will advance one from five down to four to Devon, and boom, done. Puritanism, they, it's a plus one DRM, and notice it's in blue. That is a good thing, so Puritanism gets a plus one, so it makes that a little bit easier by 33% to move up there. And then here, sorry, I'm not reading. Cromwell sides with the independents that hold bishops and presbytes, presbyters, presbyters, uh, in equal contempt. All right. Then here, the Scottish Covenanters order their forces out of Ireland to face the growing strength of forces allied to King Charles. So Ireland, well, that's not good. And Catholicism drops. That's also not good. <sighs> Yeah, it's really good things, although I will say that I did get Ironsides in Cromwell, so can't complain entirely, so there's that. All right, cool, so that is the events, so let's go ahead and move back into the action phase. The action phase, what do we want to do? Well, glad we boosted up Hull. Scotland's at bay. The Irish are just kind of hanging out for right now. Well... We still can't mess with Oxford until there's what, there are two cards that will allow us to adjust Oxford and start working on that. But honestly, we have the plus one in Puritanism. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and start there. And so we need a, uh, a three or higher. Apparently, when it comes to political roles, I'm terrible. But when it comes to battle roles, I can't be touched. Yeah. And yes, I could have bought this for the plus one, but I wouldn't have realistically. I'd, no, so I'm going to do it again. Need a three or higher. All right, there we go. So that will jump up to there. We could push that again. Why not? We have it, and it's still a three or higher because of the plus one. There we go. Boom. Do we push our luck? Hmm. Hmm. Now we need a four or higher. Hmm. Or do we boost, uh, you know what? We haven't messed with London yet. Or is that, should we, while things are not horrible, go ahead and boost London? You know what? We'll go ahead and boost it one click. So we'll put it there. Oops, that got bumped. Ah. Uh, hmm. We have one point left. We could fortify. We did just soundly defeat the Army of the North, we would need a five or a six to push them back. We boosted Hull for that reason. No, you know what? Let's go ahead and keep pushing Puritanism. Let's go ahead and try it. So we need a four or higher in this case. There we go. There we go. Boom. I'm happy. Three out of four. Well, the way to go. All right, so that is the end of that. So we go into end of times. We have not won nor lost, or have not lost. Not won, but have not lost. Then remove the temporary marker so that bad boy comes out. And that's pretty much it. And by the way, you can save zeal points if you wish, but rarely are you going to want to do that. Um, yeah, so there we go. Same five. Nothing has changed, although... All no, wait, never mind. It's only if it's down there or that's up. Never mind. All right, cool. So we go into the new round. So here we go. 
We have another event. 22 November, 1641. John Pym uh, presents a list of 204 points of objection to the king, including elements of the petition of right first proposed in 1628, but King Charles rejects them. I can't imagine King Charles going, oh, you know, yeah, all right, you make some valid points. Who knew? All right, so Ireland. So these guys advance. All right. And now they besiege or fortify Dublin. So they're going to get two rolls. They need to roll a three or higher. Just making sure that I have my numbers right on that. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. This is theirs. I apologize. So they are fortifying it. So they... Uh, a moment. Oh, shoot. I, You know what? Now I'm getting, confusing myself. So I believe they just get a plus one click on that. Or do they get a plus two? Okay, it's a plus one click on Fortify. There we go. Boom, done. There we go. All right, so moving on. Then the, the Grand Remonstrance, the Grand Remonstrance included uh, Puritan reforms that expelled all bishops from Parliament rather than blaming the king directly. It was an anti-Catholic, it was anti-Catholic in tone. So Puritanism gets a plus one DRM. Well, now. All right. Before we go any further, real quick, well, let's go ahead and finish this, and then I'll come back to talk about this up here. Pym and Hampton propose controls on the king, which passes in Parliament. The House of Commons wants more say in finances. And why wouldn't they? Parliament moves up one. Yay, us. Things are looking not horrible early on. So let me go ahead and talk about this up here. So you'll notice that this is essentially one big box. It's an F for the Catholicism side or the North side there, and an A for mine. If one of these two markers is in there, the other one cannot also be in that box. Even if there's space for it, you cannot do something like that. So if I were to push this up to there and Catholicism were to quote unquote drop, instead what it would do is push this out for the first drop, and then if it were to drop again, then it would go. And it works the exact same in the reverse. I would then have to push up, that would push that up, and then that would go there, okay? All right, so just to let you guys know how that works. So that is the event phase. So going into now the action phase, here we go. What do we want to do? Well, we now currently cannot mess with this one since the Irish army is there. We're actually looking really good there. Do we push our luck? Well, first off, do we spend a zeal point to make that to where we only need a four or higher? But the thing is, I don't know what I'm going to need for any achievements, so I feel like getting it up there would be great, but... I don't know if that's wasteful and I should be using it somewhere else. Well, I think what we do is we go ahead and boost Bristol twice to go ahead and peg that out to slow down the Army of the West for sure. So I'm going to spend two points here and go one and then two. Even though it stays at a three, it's now three clicks of three. So I'm good with that. That should keep them occupied for the foreseeable future. The Army of the North here. I don't like that they are already going to be besieging the fortress at Hull. All right. Hey, BT. Welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and risk it. One point rolling a five or six to push the Army of the North out back to Chester. That that was a colossal fail. That, that was ill-advised, obviously. Okay. So there's that. Um, what else do we want to do? We have two points left. Pushing Parliament up might not be a terrible idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to try and push Parliament up, needing a three or high. Um, it 
a higher, and we'll get this right yet, you need to roll higher than that number. So a four or higher, boom, parliament moving on up. Yes. Did I move the zeal points? I think I did. You guys tell me, did I? Not trying to cheat. That's going, I, I will wait a moment, have some tea. First cup empty. All right. Because honestly, that's going to impact what I try and do. I'm going to assume that I moved it back. So let's see, what did I do? I. That was like that. I bumped Parliament. That was one. And two bumps. No, I don't think I did. Because I tried to push back the army there. Then I did two bumps on Bristol there and there. And then I did that. Okay, so we did not. Okay. So now what, do, what are we trying to do? Um, let's, hmm. We could fortify Edinburgh, we could fortify London, or we could try and push the Irish Horde back, or bump one of the other tracks. Pierre, you say you're cleaning your counter, so victory point game. Are you also, are you messing with, with uh, cruel, uh, cruel necessity as well? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and try and push the Irish back a little bit. Because they have a free walk since that is their fortress. Let's go ahead and push them back. That way next turn we might be able to try and work on that fortress a little bit. So let's go ahead and try and take out the push the back the Irish needing a four or higher Ooh, bad bad idea boom done that is that all right so that's the end of that uh, we did not lose so any temporary markers that DRM marker comes off and we go into the next event oh wait get my five zeal points back as well all right oh we have another event wow where are the all the achievements all right September 25, 1643. With the threat of Irish troops joining the Royalist Army, Parliament signs a treaty of alliance with the Scottish Covenanters, but does not commit to Presbyterianism in England. Wow, everybody is coming home. All right, so here we go. Ireland activates. Well, it's their fortress already. So um, they are going to just advance to Ulster. That is not ideal. Then, top to bottom, left to right, it really doesn't terribly matter. So we're going to go ahead and go west there. The west advances. The north advances twice. So that means they actually get four rolls against Hull. <sighs> All right. So they need higher than a three. All right. So we want threes or lower. Okay, first one failed. Second one failed. Third one colossally failed. Fourth one failed. Way to go, boys of Hull. Way to go. All right. And the Scottish advance back to Edinburgh. There we go. That really was not as bad as it could have been. Parliament. Uh, I'm sorry, Parliament establishes a Presbyterian church in England and Ireland to appease its new ally, in Scotland. So Puritanism drops down one. And Parliament raises a Scottish army to combat the Royalists and Irish. So you'll notice that there is a political reaction here. So looking at, let me find this one. Oh, let me actually, I, I believe it's A's and B's, but let me double check for political reaction a moment. There we go. Political reaction says that examine the parliament and monarchy markers. So parliament and monarchy markers. If that marker is in the A or B grade, 
which A or B, it's not, um, then apply a drop down to it. If it's in the D or F grade, apply a move upward, D or F. Well, monarchy is in the D, it is not, is it? No, it's in the C, C is both of those. And parliament also in the C, Gah! If it, uh, oh well. So, where if it's in C, no effect. Womp womp. Okay. Put that there, put that there. All right. Oh, nice. All right. Excellent, Pierre. Very cool. Um, so, there, plus one zeal point, though. Don't mind if we do. All right. So, off to the, uh, to the action phase. Well, now... Now we got a bit of a problem, because now besieging, 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 free stride in. Well, I think we use that zeal point, that one that we just got, to go ahead and add that plus one DRM marker to go ahead and fight back one of the four armies. And honestly, let's go ahead and push back the Irish, try at least. So we're going to go there, meaning we need to roll now a three or higher to push them back. So we're going to spend one to start. All right, so that succeeded. That army moves back to there. And there is no limit to the number of times you can do this. So let's go ahead and do it again, needing a three or higher. Auto success all the way to Munster. Now the question is, now we can start working on that fortress or we can push it back one more and make max use of that DRM marker. And I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna push the Irish all the way back, needing a three or higher because of the plus one, all the way beyond the pale. Awesome. So we have two zeal points left now. Now what do we want to do? Well. We have three here that are currently under siege, but the whole point, I think we stay on target here. So we will go ahead and besiege the fortress. We have pushed the army unit out of this, and so they are in a higher numbered area. So we need to roll higher than whatever that number is. So that's a three, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Do that once. Nice, so that drops it down now to a two. And you know what? Let's go ahead and drop it to its last two as well, needing a three or higher. Ah, didn't work. But that was a very successful turn, I feel like. All right. Good. All right, so there we go. So, again, we have not lost. So, because we have not lost, we go into housekeeping, remove any temporary markers. But that was really well done. I am really happy about that. And... Again, reset that to five, I think. And pushing that back, that last roll, offset that from the fail. So I think that was a, that was a good investment. So there we go. Let's get that off that number. There we go. So, new event. Another one. Oh, I guess I didn't explain this either. So, in the first uh, of the three civil wars, you have the bronze bar, uh, border there. In the second, you have the silver border. And in the third, you have the gold border. So there you go. All right. All right. So here we go. August 30, 1644. The Scottish Marquis of Montrose, the great Montrose, raises his standard and declares for King Charles. Boo. And then launches a military campaign opening with a victory in Aberdeen. Well, all right. This is now mostly bad. So... Armies advance, starting with Scotland. Scotland gets a plus one marker, plus one strength. Oop, let me, uh, there we go. So that will go there. Boo, hiss, boo. All right. And now Scotland advances. Well, they don't advance because they are going to besiege the fortress. That is the order in which they are doing these things. So besieging the fortress is... Uh, well, they have to roll, they get two rolls and have to roll higher. So they need to roll higher than a three. We don't want that. That's a massive fail. And that was a success. So that drops. 
So Scotland is done. Now the Army of the West here, they need to roll. They get two rolls. That's a three that is not higher than a three. Ergo, it fails. And that was a cannonball got through. There we go. Then we have uh, we have an uprising. Oh, no. So the uprising is in the west. And for this one, a moment. I need to look up where to put this. So... So while I'm doing this, how many of y'all out there have played this? Um, I'm curious. I know Pierre said he's fixing to play it after the uh, stream. But in the meantime, the rest of it, the rest of y'all. Oh, come on. Where are you? Ah, here we go. Benia, da, da, da. All right, to place the revolt marker, roll one die and place it on the corresponding numbered area in the region. That's right. And I guess it's, since it's them, it's going into number three in the west. So number three in the west is going right there. All right. Um, if I'd rolled a six, it wouldn't have gone out there. All right. That's a bummer. So now... I'm going to have to deal with that revolt. Okay, but the good news, well, siege or fortify Edinburgh. So he's going to siege it. So he now gets two rolls, needing a higher than two. So come on, low numbers. Ugh. Well, one more and it flips. Let's not. Ah, it flips. So it then goes to a zero, which means this flips over and immediately goes to the two side. There. Oh, the Scots have failed me. Boo. Tony, where were you? Terrible. But on the positive note, I can now besiege Oxford. So Oxford has a unique distinction in that it straddles both where the Army of the North and the Army of the West is going to come in here in Area 1. So while both can besiege it, it also works as a roadblock for both of them. So now that this card is out here, I'm going to go ahead and actually just put it up here as a reminder that I can now besiege Oxford. So good. That is really well. I guess I'll do that afterwards here. All right, cool. Puritans assist Montrose, uh, assert Montrose as an agent of the Pope. He led 2,000 crack Irish infantrymen along the with Catholic Scottish Highlanders against Lowlanders and Coventers. So Scotland drops one. I am not a fan of my, uh, the, uh, the Scottish Marquis of Montrose. I am not a fan of his at all. Charles, Charles's cause is boosted by Montrose's successful actions in Scotland. The monarchy drops down one. That was basically a horrible, horrible turn there. All right, my turn to now respond. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, revolt marker. So the army unit and any other revolt markers must be in a higher number area in which to actually address that. But as it is, I cannot. I cannot do anything with this fortress because the army is there as well. So I could try and push that back out um, actually over here to then get rid of the uprising marker because I won't be able to fortify that fortress later on. I have to deal with the Scottish horde here. Oof. What do we do? What do we do? Tony, true Scotsman. He's in the pub. All right. Oh, good. Sounds like uh, turning a few of you guys on to this. Cool. All right. Oh, awesome. 
Welcome, with Nail. All right, from Tel Aviv. Oh, that's so, that's awesome. Very cool. All right, so what do we do? Well, we have five zeal points. Man. I feel like the two most pressing things... I, I feel like there are four pressing, five pressing things, honestly. Flipping this isn't pressing, but I definitely want to do that. But I feel like that is backburnered for right now. So I think we're going to put that aside. The monarchy and Catholicism being at the very bottoms of their tracks, or not very bottoms, but in the D of their tracks, those are both, um, those are urgent, I think. The other ones are getting the Scottish pushed back to the Highlands so that I can then flip Edinburgh back over, as well as pushing the West back, dealing with the uprising so I can support Hull. At least Hull is, wait, is holding out a little bit. But man, I feel like if I don't address this soon, I feel like both of these are more urgent than those. I don't know. And then there's working on Oxford, but again, I feel like that's going to be back Bernard for right now. So not going there. So we have two, we have four urgent things, and we have five points in which to deal with it. Do we spend a point to drop the Army of the North down and then try and push on them? I think we do. I think I'm going to go there, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the Army of the North. Because the Scottish have the plus one strength for this turn only, I think dealing with this being the priority, I think that's what we're going to deal with. So we're going to try and push them out. So we're going to go there. So we need a four or higher. Nope. Going to do it again. All right. There we go. Four or higher. That puts them back to Chester. Do we push them again? Nope, I think we're gonna go with the uprising, try and get rid of this bad boy. So we need a four or higher there. Nope. Um, let's do it again. There we go. Uprising is defeated. So there's that. Okay. <sighs> Put out one fire at least. So one of four or six fires. I'll take it. So that's the end of the action phase. We have not lost. Remove the temporary markers. So that goes away. That goes away to there. And we can take a breath. All right, let's get some water. I appreciate that, Tony. <laughs> I'll go and have a word with the folk at Edinburgh Castle around the corner, see if they'll reconsider their ways. That's, I appreciate that. All right, here we go. Oh, hey, we have our first achievement. Now, the other thing that I want to point out to you guys on these achievements, and I'll go ahead and do so. You'll notice that the four here is crossed off and it's a handwritten three. There, these are actually official changes to the, the cost for these cards. So there, there we go. All right. So I must meet these prerequisites, spend that, and then I get this at the bottom. All right. So that said, it says the petition of right, 1628 to 1641. The petition of right sets out specific liberties for subjects that the king cannot infringe. So the monarchy must be set at A. <laughs> Parliament must be at A. Okay. And Puritanism must be at or higher than C. Oh, hey. All right. And it only costs only three zeal points. But I would get a fortify any parliamentary fortress. It says city, but fortress. And it's worth three permanent victory points at the end of the game. Nice. All right. But the moving parliament or monarchy all the way up, that's, uh, that seems ambitious right now and not the priority. Okay, so because it is an achievement, we keep going through the deck, so we continue. 
and it's an event. If it had been another achievement, we would put it up, do the exact same thing, and keep going. All right. August 22nd, 1642, King Charles raises the royal standard at Nottingham, formally declaring war versus Parliament and calling for loyal subjects to support him. Oxford was to be his capital during the war. Okay. So, Nottingham here. All right. All right. So, uh, see, besieging armies advance. Flip that over. All right. Or activate armies, as it were. So, starting with Ireland. And this is the second can besiege Oxford. But we already got one, so disregard that. So, Ireland advances. Easy enough. Then the north advances. Well, we pushed them back, but at least didn't have to mess with Hull right now. And then the Scottish advance. Well, they no longer have to deal with Edinburgh Castle. So, Tony, get on that. And the Scottish advance. Not the end of the world. Okay. Yet. Here we go. Cromwell joins Parliament's Eastern Association of Counties, which provided and administered an army that only recruited godly, honest men, which is, I believe, the beginning of uh, the new army. Um, I forget, I forget the, I'm forgetting a word in that, a new something or other army, and I, it's escaping me right now. But anyway, Puritanism bumps up to B. Nice. And the Civil War, what Sir William Waller called this war without an enemy, begins. The monarchy drops down. Well, it's now in the F. So what happens when that is that flips over and it says that results or revolts and deviltry are plus one strength. All of a sudden, I'm really glad I bumped, that I got rid of, put down that revolt there. And a, a monarchy gets a minus one DRM, which means not roll a five, I need to roll specifically a six to get the monarchy out of that this turn. That might be a lost cause. Radio. Oh, I forgot to reset my zeal points. There we go. New modern army. Thank you, Tony. That's it. All right. Um, no, there are, shoot, I want to say I, six or seven achievements in the deck, I believe. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Thank you. Yep, there we go. All right. So time to address some stuff. All right. Well, the Scottish Horde, I think we need to push them back first and foremost. Um, possibly look at messing with the West and possibly working on that since the Irish. Uh, what do we do? So many things. First off, do we put the DRM marker out there anywhere? Well, it says once per action phase, and you don't have to do it necessarily at the beginning. I Pretty sure you don't have to. Let me double check. It does not say that it must be done at the beginning. Um, it's just whenever you attach it to a thing, it affects that thing for the whole round. So you know what? I think first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and try and flip Dublin back to us. So we're going to spend one point there to go ahead and needing a three or higher. Uh, do it again. Thank you. So there, and if we do it one more time, it will flip over and be a roadblock, and I do want to. There we go. So it drops the zero, which flips it over, and it resets back to two. Awesome. So we have that in our favor now. What do we do now? I think Bristol being one click higher than Hull, I think we don't worry about the west right now. The north, eh, we're okay, I think, for the moment. Um, also, keep an eye on this. Puritanism's good to go. Parliament's pretty close. Not a priority, and that's the monarchy is so far away. 
and it would require so many actions, I feel like that that uh, that victory point achievement is just a lost cause. I think we go ahead and try and push back the Scots up here. So we'll go ahead and spend one there. Needing a four or higher. Nope, and we'll do it again. There we go. And pushing them back there. All right, not as bad as it could have been. I'll take it. We did not lose, even though the monarchy is now one quarter of the four that trigger us losing the game, okay? New battle army, Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell joined. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so we have a new round. Oh, here we go. We have another, uh, another achievement. So the Root and Branch Petition of May of 1641, presented to the Long Parliament and signed by 15,000 Londoners. It called for the abolition of the Episcopacy... Episcopacy... Oh boy, I cannot say this word. Episcopy. Episcopacy. I give up. Root and branches. There we go. Monarchy must be at B or higher. Parliament must be at B or higher. And Puritanism must be at A. And it only costs two zeal points as opposed to three nowadays. Uh, your next achievement card costs two zeal points fewer and it's worth two victory points. This one feels a little bit more achievable than the other achievement. So, we'll put that there. So, leaning towards maybe trying to go after that one. All right. Oh, there you go, Pierre. Thanks. Six achievement cards in this deck. All right. All right. So, we go again, and there we go. Long Parliament passes Act to Regulate Privy Council. All right, August 1641. The Long Parliament passes laws regulating the King's Privy Council, eliminating the Star Chamber Court and High Commission by the Hebeus Corpus Act and having regular assemblies. So as far as advancement, the Scottish advance again. Well, at least we pushed them back a little bit. And then there is unrest in London. Fortresses cannot fall to royalists via the card, so now... The strength is reduced to its lowest value. Um, hold on, let me get to the actual rule book on this one. All right, this is a very bad news. You must immediately conduct a siege against London in the normal manner, so they get two die rolls. However, London will not fall to the royalist in this manner. Um, if it would flip, it stays at the two value, and I lose one zeal point if that happens. And it says, the uh, reason for this is social unrest in London was endemic throughout the 13 years of the English Civil Wars. Religious strife and lingering support for the monarchy all simmered just below the surface and erupted on several occasions. So, all right, so they need to roll fours or higher. Let's fail. All right, one fail. To fail. Awesome. So we quelled that uprising in London. No problem there. Then, Archbishop Laud brings back altar rails to protect altars from desecration and reemphasizes the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist. Puritans are outraged. How dare you? Outrage. Rawr. All right. Then, Parliament announces plots by Jesuits and threats of invasion by France. Get a zeal point. Yes. All right. So what do we do? Not a lot of battles so far, I've noticed. All right. Um, so what are we looking at? Oh, you know what? This should have gone away at the end of last turn. I apologize. So that's a little bit less horrible. We still need a five or six. Well, we could actually work on that. What do we do? What do we do? So, pushing the Scottish back up. I feel like I'm treading water, but treading water is not a bad thing because that's what I'm trying to do is hold off. But I do think we go ahead and spend one zeal point and go ahead, put that on the monarchy. So now, basically, we need whatever the face value is and we're going to go after this pretty hard, I think. So, push the monarchy back on a four or higher. Boom. There. And now because that is out of that box, this flips back over to its picture side. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it again. 
Do it again. There we go. And you know what? It's a little bit easier here. Let's do it again. So now we only need a three or higher. Oh, there we go. Drop. One, two, three, four. Drop. One, two, three, four. Moved it. One, two, three, and a fail. I think we're right. And then we're going to do it again. Let's go ahead and keep pushing it. So now we only need a three or higher again. Nice. I think that was totally worth it to me. Plus, all of a sudden, let's look. Monarchy is at B. Parliament is one step below. Puritanism is two steps below. And it would cost two zeal. We're actually pretty close to this one. And this one, monarchy needs to be up one. Parliament needs to be up two. And Puritanism is there. All of a sudden, both of these are looking, huh, maybe not so bad. Okay. Hmm. That was, that was a, I'm really happy with that turn. That worked out well. So we clear the markers. Don't forget to do that this time. Uh, anything else out here? There is not. All right. So we did not lose. In fact, we are actually relatively healthy right now. This resets to five. I think... Maybe we start working on Catholicism a little as well to try and get that plus one. I don't know how long that might be for a single turn. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be worth as much because there's nothing here for Catholicism. So not really a focus on that. So good rolls there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. We have another uh, achievement. So self-denying ordinance, April 1645. The self-denying ordinance deprived MPs from holding commands in the Army or Navy during the English Civil War. If I won a battle this turn or the previous turn, meaning over here, okay, Parliament must be at B, okay, Puritanism at B, and zeal cost is 3, and if so, permanently remove both one-strength parliamentary musket and pike units from play. So that means my armies are now just inherently stronger. And three victory points. Sweet. All of a sudden, I want all three of these cards. So do we get greedy? Do we focus on this and let this sit for a round or two? I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, here we go. We're going to have a battle. Let me have a drink a moment. So tell me, are you guys enjoying this? This being my first true solo war game here. Are you guys in... I feel like it's me talking to myself a whole lot. And so I don't know if I'm droning on. Give me your feedback on this, guys. And if you're watching this after the fact, leave a comment below. If you want to see more of these, let me know. And by these, I mean solo war games versus, you know, states of siege in general, but there will probably be more of these, Ottoman sunset, etc. <clears throat> All right, June 16, June 16, 1642. Royalist far, uh, forces in the Army of the West, desperately short of food and ammunition, defeat the numerically superior parliamentary forces and secure the Southwest for the king. Well, first off, there's going to be a battle, then Ireland, the North, and the West. So everybody but the Scottish are going to try and advance. Okay, so we have a battle. So, getting back over here. So, oh, these guys. I apologize. These should have gone back. So, there we go. There we go. Good enough. All right. Designate which royal army uh, the battle is against. And honestly, we're going we're gonna to pick on the north again because we have a stronger fortress here. So we're going to go ahead and work on the Battle of the North, or the Army of the North, sorry. And do I want to commit any units? I'll think on that here in a minute. So first we're going to go ahead and throw, just randomly pull some stuff. We'll go in these. I don't know if I shuffled those. Okay, so we'll go with these two. There and there. 
So before I flip them, well, we're going to have to have four here. I know that. All right. Um, yeah, what the hell? Let's go ahead. Let's, let's stick with it. So here we go. Ooh. Prince Rupert has come. He'll match up against Ironsides. Ooh. Oh, boy. Well, Rupert's blue coats. Kind of makes sense that they're on the same side here, right? Uh, the Royal Cornish Foot. This is, this, is, uh, this is less than ideal. Oh, hey. There's a one, at least. Oh, boy. The King's Lifeguards. Not good. All right. Well, at least there's that facing Cromwell. Ooh. Okay, so it's not horrible. So we have a five versus five, six versus three, seven versus four, and then eight versus six. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, A coin solo on a stream might be a bit of a big ask. We'll see how that goes down the road. All right, so there's our matchup. Still, no events. That seems unlikely. I don't know how many event ones they are in these, but um, no events. So we go, here we go. Do I wish to spend a zeal point um, for the plus one strength anywhere on any unit? So the four versus seven, I'm hoping for a draw at best with those. So realistically, uh, um, you know what? I don't think I'm going to bother spending the point on this one. So we're going to just go ahead and battle. So we start here, five versus five. Come on, blue. All right, so that's going to be a total of eight versus seven. So what does that mean? It's a draw. So Ironside just goes there. All right, so number two, Cromwell, however, I do feel pretty strong should do well here, and we do. So that's going to be nine versus six. So Cromwell flips over to his plus three and adds that to this side. That's good. Um, all right, so we go third now. Now it's seven versus four. Need, a, need some help. Did not work out. So that's going to be 11 versus six. Uh, that that's not good. So these two will then come down here into the defeat box. And now Cromwell's uh, side of things. We're looking at 11 versus 6. Uh, that was uh, that's 16 versus 7. That was a massive, massive victory. So that means these three will then go up into the victory box. Okay. Okay. So now, these guys lost. So these guys are going to come down here to the deadly outcomes box. So now we look at the, which box has the majorities. Now, if the defeats ever have more than either of these boxes, I can freely choose to drop these guys down here so that they have more than the defeat. So it becomes a draw, which is the majority of the battles in this game are going to be. However, yay, parliamentary side. There are three, one, and two here of mine, so that means we actually have a victory. So here, I'm victorious. The affected army unit is disordered. I should have done that earlier with the North Army. So, um, and I gain one benefit point for each unit after three. Well, I don't gain that. So instead, this will just flip over to the disordered side. I forgot to do that earlier. That would have pushed them back one, but whatever, no big deal. Um, so that is that. And because this is not the majority, I do not lose the zeal point. Because this is not the majority, I do not lose the zeal point nor drop the monarchy. However, if any of these named units ever are defeated, they then have to roll on the deadly outcomes track. Roll a die for each named unit, regardless of what side it is. A three or four, it goes down here, and it's out of the draw pile for the next battle. 
a five or six, it's immediately put back in a one or a two dead and out of the game. So come on, one or two. Oh, that sucked. Oh, well. So that means this guy joins the rest of the crew back up. I'm just going to shuffle these off because it's right in front of me. There we go. There. And all of these guys, including the life's, uh, the king's lifeguard bummer. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that these are random draws because that was a horrible draw for me and I still haven't been able to show off an event. So... I'm just going to push those up, give myself a little bit more room here. There. All right. So these guys, uh, these guys, um, right, so they just get shuffled in. And that's why we want to get rid of some of the ones, right, or the two ones that are in here so that they don't have, they don't ever come out. Okay. All right. There we go. So battle done. Now, uh, they are disordered, so when they try and advance, they just flip over, which is awesome. So, the Irish advance one, then the North advances one, or in this case, just flips over. That is their activation, and the West will try and roll a four or higher twice. Uh, massive fail, and one success. So, there we go. Bristol doing its job holding out. So, there we go. Now, Parliament's Lagan army decisively, defeat, decisively defeats O'Neill's Army of the Irish Confederation at the Battle of Glenmark, Glen Maybe? Uh, on June 16, 1643, the Irish suffered heavy battlefield losses. So Catholicism gets a plus one, which that is really excellent to be able to push that back a bit easier. Then... Political battles in Parliament in, ensue over the conduct of the war and lead to unrest. Radical, quote-unquote, backbenchers in the House of Commons attack the high nobility members. Squabbling. Stop that. All right. So, the event phase finally over. We move on to the action phase. Okay. So, let's take a look at our achievements. That's... That, that might be the priority. I think the other priority, priority, push the Scots back, push the Irish back. Um, I can mess with Oxford, but I think getting these might not be a terrible idea. All right. Um, uh, is it? Iker? I haven't played Ottoman Sunset. I have it, but I haven't played it yet, so I can't compare to this. Um, yeah, a coin, when it comes, it's going to be the two-player Colonial Twilight. Just FYI. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Dawn of the Zeds might not be a bad idea. I got to get a copy. Good call. All right, moving on. All right, so what are we looking at? Well, pushing Parliament at least to B has got to be a priority. So there's that. Puritanism has to be at least a C, depending on which one it is, and pushing it all the way to an A. Parliament needs the biggest. I'm going to go ahead and push that down and give Parliament, and we're going to start there. Yeah, I don't overthink it. Going to go there. So we need a three. Going to go one for that. Nice. So, Parliament's at a C, but we know we need that at least a B, so we're going to try again, pushing, hoping for a 4 or higher. Yeah! Okay. So, we're at a B. Puritanism needs to be at a B, and then... Catholicism pushing that off there? Let's spend one point to try and push Catholicism up. All right, so we need a four or higher for that. I'm not sure if that shows. There we go. Get that out of there. We have one point left. 
push in Parliament all the way up, we would be one step away from this one. Not a bad idea. And we have, we, we invested in the, in the zeal marker. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's try it. We need a five or higher. Come on, baby, don't fail me now. Or that. Radio. I'll take that off. That too. <clears throat> right, moving on. Okay, so we get five back here as well. And we flip. By the way, if we got another achievement, we would actually lose one of those up there. So that's why I'm trying to push for that right now. Okay. All right. So we have another battle coming up. So June 30th, 1643, the, the dogged resistance of the heavily outnumbered Parliament, Parliament Northern Association Army was finally broken. Royalist victory secures Yorkshire and, uh, and threatens the key fortresses of Bristol and Hull. Well, Bristol and Hull, oddly thematic. All right, so we have North and West are both going to activate this term. So the battle, honestly, I feel like we've been seeing a whole lot of North and we haven't seen much West. So I'm going to actually go ahead and try and go after the West in this battle here. Plus, um, trying to stick with the theme here. Rupert's up here in the North. Hopefully he doesn't show up down here. So we have another battle. And we decided it's going to be the West, so we're going to go one, two, three, and go with this one, four there, that one, and that one. All right. Um, I, it's hard not to fight with Cromwell, and honestly, we're. He likes the left, but we're going to let Ironside sit this one out. So that means we're going to go one here. There we go. All right. So what are we up against? Oh, we have our first event that will take place. All right. We have Newcastle White Coats. Oof. Fairly sizable numbers here. Oh, apparently Prince Rupert uh, came on down and made the trip from uh, Hull down to Bristol. That's unfortunate. Another event. All right. So currently we have four versus three for the bad guys, six versus five for us. 7 versus 6, and 7 versus 9, and hopefully 1 for Cromwell. All right. Uh, okay, so now for each event that appears on a unit, draw one tactical battle card, and here we go. So it is a red one, so we need to actually resolve it. It says, boy, the battle poodle. That's not good. Resolve immediately. Add 2... Uh, a plus two, I should say, strength to Prince Rupert unit if it is deployed. Otherwise, add plus one to the combat value of the weakest Royalist Cavalry unit. If there's a tie for weakest, assign this bonus to your choice. Ouch. Boyo is Prince Rupert's much-feared white poodle whom the Royalists adopted as their mascot with the honorary rank of Sergeant Major General. Parliamentarians circulated rumors that Boy was a witch's familiar, an invisible shapeshifter, and even though he was the, uh, and even that he was the devil, Boy died bravely at the Battle of Marston Moor. Damn poodles. All right, well, I guess we're gonna go ahead and spend one to bring out the strength, and this is now going to be up against the damn poodle. All right, well, you know what? I don't want to necessarily say that yet, because we still have one more event card, so hold on. Oh, God. High ground. Resolve immediately. Add one combat value to the weakest Royalist musket and pike units, if more than one is tied for weakest. Um, choose one. Immediately reshuffle the battle cards to form a new draw pile. This is fun. All right, so the weakest is going to be right there. 
At the first battle of Newbury, 20 September 1643, Newbury being, uh, oh, actually, no, where is Newbury? Right down here. There we go. Uh, the Royalists, under Charles' command and deployed on high ground, met a parliamentarian force under the Earl of Essex, who launched a surprise attack at dawn, capturing the high ground. Off balance, Troy's Royalists counterattacked and drove Essex from the Central Hill. So we need to now shuffle these up, put that there, put that there, and shuffle them up. All right. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Desmond. All right, shuffled and... Cut. All right, so now we will... Go ahead and add the plus one strength for Cromwell. Cromwell versus Rupert, that, that would be something to see, wouldn't it? All right, so starting off up here, we, we need some help in today's battle. So here we go. Well, uh, that's going to be eight versus eight. That would be a draw. Okay, not the worst result that could have been. This is a really important one, though. Seven to seven. Oh, shnikes. Sorry, Rupert. There we go. And Rupert, why don't you go hang out down there with your damn dog? All right. Now up here, we're looking at eight versus six. Ooh, ouch. Both those guys are defeated. Big fight here. So we're at 12 versus 7. I like our chances. Whew. All right. We got him. So these three will come up there. All right. So the West is disordered. That's good news. And now Rupert and your damn dog get a chance to die. A horrible, ugly death, I hope. One or a two. Come on, baby. No, but the good news is Rupert's going to hang out here for a little bit. Oh, and oh, wait, these guys actually won their battle, so they hang out, so they actually stay. There we go. All right. Oh, I guess I, I don't even know if I really said this. So when this deck runs out, that's when we, if I haven't lost by then, we then check to see uh, how I did in the game, whether I'm successful or not. Oops. I'll just put a couple out. There we go. Not paying attention to that. I don't want to cheat that. Those go away. This will come out over there. Cool. Um, because it was three uh, up here in the victory box, I still don't get any uh, benefit points for that, unfortunately. All right. But I did. I was able to disorder the West Army. All right. So coming over here, the North, they need to roll a four or higher. They fail, and the West flips over. Mission accomplished there. Then, besiege or fortify Bristol and Hull, both. So they get another one. So the North will start here. They need to roll a four or higher. Fail and fail. And now the West needs a four or higher. They succeeded. Oh, will you stop that? There. All right. Moving over here. Um, all right, so uh, the panders of the whore of Babylon, we uh, quote unquote, the wow, the panders of the whore of Babylon, weakness in the face of the Antichrist Christ must not be tolerated. Puritan rally cry. Okay, Puritanism gets a plus one DRM, which I appreciate that, but that's aggressive. Jeez. Which, just saying, needs to be at A, B, or C, depending on which one we go for. There's that. And then here, Parliament passes the licensing order 
to begin censoring written material. This does quiet some of the unrest in Parliament, which I appreciate what it does. However, um, I hate that it, it's censoring what's, you know, the written stuff, but eh, it's my side for now. So, okay. Yay. All right. Whew. Finally done with the events. So, I want cards. What can we do? So, we need at least two zeal points. So, this one, we did just get a victory. So, the first one's met. Parliament at B. Puritism at B. And then that would cost us all three. I think, I think because that's, that's the easiest and most direct to do, I think we go ahead and do that. So we're going to spend one zeal point, which means we need a four or higher, and we can get that bad boy. Come on, one time. Yeah. There we go. So, Puritism at a B. Parliament at a B or higher. Well, same. Uh, a battle victory this turn or last turn. Check. Here, zeal cost. It costs three. Whoop. Done. We get to purchase the self-denying ordinance. <sighs> Which this means permanently remove both one strength units from play. So for any more battles. Okay, so there's one out of play. And two. Awesome. And it's worth three victory points, not to be missed. Plus, pushing that up is worth an extra point as well. I'm happy with that result. We Things weren't looking too good in the battle, and we, we defeated Prince Rupert and his damn dog. And, uh, yeah, overall, pretty happy about that. Okay. Plus, now, if we get another achievement, it doesn't push one of those bad boys off of there. So these two are, you know what, I'll just leave them as victory markers up there. Cool, so we got three points. All right, and that's that. That will reset. We have not lost. Feeling, feeling not horrible about things. All right. And it's a good thing we did that. Committee of Both Kingdoms, January 1644. This committee was set up by both poli Aha. with both parliamentary and Scottish Covenanters to oversee the war effort and foreign policy. The monarchy must be at B or higher, it is. Edinburgh must be on our side. It is not currently. Scotland must be at C or higher. It is. Parliament must be at B or exactly at B. Um... And then the zeal cost is three. Immediately attack the Scottish army twice for free and three victory points. That one is really attainable this turn, potentially. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Well, on that note, <clears throat> well, that sucks. All right, 26 October, 1640. After... After the defeat of the Earl of Stratford, King Charles is compelled to sign the Treaty of Rapalm and cede land to the Scottish Covenanters and leave Newcastle in the hands of the Scots. So, here we go. The Scottish advance twice, but they get a plus one marker. That's unfortunate. So they advance twice. One, two, and they fortify the castle because it's in their hands. Boo. That is not good. Here's the thing. If this, if the Scottish advance again, instead of coming down, instead they then push the north, which basically means they get an extra advance, the north does, which would besiege whole. That's not good. The Covenanters' victory also promoted Presbyterianism as a form of church government as opposed to ep episcopacy. I am struggling with words today. It's early, I guess. Which was favored by the crown. So Scotland drops one. Boo. And John Pym creates the Parliamentary Committee of Safety. The purpose of the committee was to secure funds first for the king and later for Parliament. So Catholicism gets a plus one DRM. Oh, by the way, these should have cleared. There. All right. So we're at five points. Looking at that last card, I don't think that's going to happen this turn. Parliament's at B. Scotland needs to be up one. 
Monarchy needs where it is. Edinburgh needs the... I think we go ahead and spend a zeal point to offset that strength marker and try and push the Scottish back. So basically, this will then negate that. So we're just going to go ahead and remove both of those. And then try and get four or higher. Fail. Fail. Success. But I have to be able to get them back all the way to five to be able to flip over Edinburgh. Hmm. What do we do with this last one? We could push the Irish back a little bit. We uh, This is actually, oh boy. We could try and knock down Oxford. Now, I think we, I think we try and push back the West. Keep them away from Oxford so that we can start working on that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try. So going for the West here for our last one. Need a five or higher. Fail. There we go. That resets and we get a new round. Mm. So, oh. Um, so Crafter, I, I, I never even, I had to look where it was. So no, I'm not at all seeing that for what it's worth while actually playing. So all markers come off there, okay? All right, so July 26, 1643. After a siege, the Cavalier Royalists' army under Prince Rupert of the Rhine, King Charles's nephew, takes a strategic part of Bristol from its weakened roundhead parliamentary garrison. Oh, okay. Um, so let's, let's go. So the north gets a plus one strength. There. And they advance one. So they need uh, four or higher. There's one. And fail. Good. Then the Scotland advances twice. Golly, that's frustrating. So there's one. And then the second, if they would advance, it's then the north. So the north now gets two more shots at Hull. Needing a three or higher. There's one. And. Yes. They held. Way to go. However. They besiege Bristol. Twice. So two rolls here. So it needs a three or higher. And they take it. And they took it. Oh boy. Things are starting to come a little unglued. And so there's that was one. And I believe, well, no, the fact that it says twice specifically, I think it fortifies the second time. Let me double check on that because it specifically says the second one. Yep. All right. Ugh. All right. Persecution of suspected witches begins based on signs and wonders from heaven. Oh, the irony of that, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, as they allegedly, as they are allegedly aiding Prince Rupert. So I appreciate the end result, but wow, that's funny. Okay, you can conduct a public witch trials. If so, Puritanism goes all the way up, but Parliament drops one. And looking at this, getting Puritanism all the way up to A, dropping Parliament. It's kind of a wash, isn't it? Um, I mean, I guess pushing that up makes it easier. So let's see, Parliament, Puritanism as an A here. Parliament would be at a C, would need to get up to a B. 
The monarchy is already there. Might not be terrible. Sure, let's go ahead and do it. So we will go there and drop that and activate that card. All right. The uh, cessation of arms treaty allowed royalist troops to return from Ireland. Rumors begin to swirl that Charles is in secret negotiation to bring a Catholic army to England. Ireland drops down. All right, so we're, we are at five points. So, you know what? It's only one. I feel like I'm going to need the victory points. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to add one there and then spend one needing a four or higher to push that back up. Fail. Four or higher, that's a four that pushes that up. So now, monarchy at B, parliament at B, Puritanism at A, zeal cost is two, and I can go ahead and get that card. Let's go ahead and do it. I realize things are going to hell in a handbasket, but we'll deal with it. So my next achievement card costs two zeal points fewer. Okay. So we'll go ahead, put those back over here. Keep that on top as a reminder, and there we go. So you guys try and help me remember that the zeal points cost two less. All right. Have not lost. That resets. Go there. Go there. And I think we're good. All right. Next round. Whew. Get a drink. Yeah, Anthony, that was my my uh, my gut reaction to that as well. Yep. All right, here we go. March 5th, 1642, Parliament takes control of the county militias without the consent of the king for the first time in English history. In addition, the arsenal of, at Hull is fortified against royalist attack. So here we go. Ireland gets a minus one. I support this. And... They go ahead and try and advance. So they need a three or higher and they succeed. So that flips and then they besiege or fortify Dublin. So that goes to there. Then I gain a unit, a London uh, trained, London trained bands. Nice. So we get a named unit. Awesome. So that will go up there. With the ones gone and them, I need more battles. Those That's going to help me. Hopefully uh, that works out. The Parliament of Scotland sends an army to Carrickfergus with 2,500 Scottish Coventer troops in order to achieve, quote, the extirpation of property from Ireland, end quote. Catholicism drops down. Then... Queen Henrietta Maria goes to Holland with the crown jewels and King Charles' young children. They would ultimately flee to Catholic-dominated France. So the monarchy, to be able to mess with, or makes it easier, I should say, to be able to push that up. But probably not going to be a priority for now. All right, so looking at these, do we want to go that route or do we want to go ahead and push back on some of this stuff? I think we're going to go ahead and push back. We're going to start here with the Irish since they're weakened. So I need a three or higher to push them back. Good. And let's go ahead and get them one more time. There we go. That gets them all the way back. That costs two zeal points. Okay. Don't need to worry about them for right now. I think we probably ought to try, wow, these guys are, <sighs> I'm going to spend one point to fortify London, I'm going to spend 
one point to try and push back the Army of the West, needing a five or higher? Nope. I'm going to do it again. Ah, all right. I failed. That comes off. That comes off. And that resets. Ooh, hold on. Oh, no. So for housekeeping, that is going to be Hull, Oxford, and Bristol. I've lost Bristol, but I still have Hull. So I'm actually only getting four points. And I think I actually should have only had four to begin with. So that last roll, had it succeeded, I would have discounted. So because I lost Bristol, I only get three for London and one for Hull. Need, yeah, so that needs to become a uh, priority. Eesh. All right, here we go. All right, good, another battle. I actually welcome these now. 23 October 1642, the first major battle of the English Civil War ends in a draw as both sides' forces were raw and untrained. Royalist cavalry prevailed, but parliamentary infantry did not yield. So we have a battle here. We are definitely going to be fighting the West because I want them disordered if at all possible. Plus it weakens them. So we're going to go against the West. We are definitely going to bring everybody out because we really want a, a victory in this one to uh, disorder these troops. So Rupert is unavailable and his damn dog. So there's that. All right, let's see how it goes. There's an event. And King's lifeguards did not learn their lesson from the last battle. Excellent there for against Cromwell. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Okay. All right. First thing we have, we have, it looks like, just one event. All right. Leveler mutinies. Resolve immediately. Subtract two from the combat value of the strongest musket and pike unit. So that's going to be actually a four now. Still not as bad as it could have been. Uh, levelers were political radicals seeking religious toleration, free trade, constitutional rights, etc. To be honest, not really bad guys. After winning the first civil war, the new model army grew mutinous as Parliament was eager to disband it without settling back pay or hearing soldiers' grievances, allowing levelers and army agitators to cause trouble. Pay your armies, people. It's not hard. They have arms against you. Makes sense. Come on. So, hey, Yoda. Welcome. All right. So, there goes that. So, we have our first true discard that didn't come back. So, what are we looking at? We're looking at a plus one there, a plus four there. We're looking at a, a plus two there and minus, but there's that. Do we want to add a plus one to any of this? For a zeal point, I, I don't because I can't afford the loss of the zeal point. But if I win strong enough, I can get it back. Six versus eight. All right, fine. So we're going to actually add it here. Although he would be at 9 versus 8, 10 versus... Two, ah, hold on. You know what? I am not. All right. So we're starting up, up top with Ironsides versus the Royalist, Royalist Cavalry at a plus 1. And it's a wash. So that's going to be a total of 10 versus 10. So that would be a draw. All right, Cromwell, counting on you, buddy. Don't fail me, did not. So that's going to be 9 to 5. There we go. And we start up here. So that's actually 8 versus 6. 
Hey Ian, welcome. There we go. So that's eight versus six, so that's 12 versus nine. These bad boys go up to the victory area. So we're all but a sh nope, don't want to say that yet. So this will go away. And now we have nine versus eight. Come on, boys. <sighs> 11 versus 10. So what does that mean? That means that these two go into the draw and he goes up there. And I'll be honest, I don't know what happens in this case. I need to look this one up for the result. If there's a tie for having the majority of your pieces, the battle's outcome is a draw. Son of a... Well, if I put that plus one there, that cost me. So that means we end up as a draw. Um, and these guys were a draw, which means they don't go over there, which means Rupert then comes back. Oh, that's frustrating. So with the draw, um, <laughs> you are not in God's favor and the outcome is a draw. The affected army's unit status is unchanged and I lose one zeal point. So I lost the one zeal point anyway. Got greedy. Oof, that, that smarts. Apparently my guys like being underdogs. They don't do good against the, when they're the favorites against the spread. So all these come back. Ugh. All right. So the Army of the North now advances twice. So they get two rolls at three or higher. That succeeds, which means that flips. And then a four to five for the second one is there. Uh, actually, hold on. Um, I don't think it, let's see, it besieged the fortress, and then uh, the order in which it does this is recover, right, besiege, and advance. So they besiege, so nope, sorry, that will go there, and that will drop down to there. All right. So that was the Army of the North twice, and then the West will go once. It's already taken that over. Now advances to two as well. Oof. All right. Owen Rowe Owen Ro O'Neill arrives in County Donegal to fight for Ireland and the Catholic faith. He was the leading representative of the O'Neills and the head of the Ulster Irish. Catholicism drops now down to the F box. We have our first F there. Oh, nope. Doesn't flip, just stay. Oh, actually, wait. Because Puritanism is in the A box, it actually doesn't drop, as I said earlier. It just pushes that back down to B, which, looking at this, doesn't hurt me terribly. I'm okay with that. Then, Parliament orders the fortification of London as Charles advances on the city. Well, Parliament gets a plus one DRM. Okay, here we go. Hey, Uva. All right, so we only have three, and right now we're only going to get three DRM. I have got to work on getting at least one of these armies pushed back, if not both, and I haven't even touched Oxford yet. Oh, boy. So this one's kind of a lost cause because Edinburgh there, I... Ugh. Um... Although, let's look at this one, the Petition of Right. It requires two zeal points, so I can only spend one other. I, and Puritanism at C. Oh, the monarchy's got to be at A. Never mind. All right, so let's push some dudes back. Let's try and push some armies. I think... 50... No, we're going to flip that. 
spend one zero point to be able to push these back. And we'll put it here so it's got to be a four or higher. And we're going to do that twice no matter what. So we need a four or higher. Nope. And nope. Okay, so we get three points. This comes off. Wow, I'm regretting not spending that zeal point on that. That goes away. And now I'm stressed. Here we go. Need some help. That is not helpful. All right, 19 January, 1643. Royalist forces, forces at the Army of the West handily defeat the inexperienced parliamentary forces, capturing 1,500 men and secure Cornwall for the king during the winter lull in fighting. So the West is going to advance twice, which means that puts it in London. There's going to be unrest in London. However, I have a fight, and we're going to go ahead and take go after the Army of the West during the battle. So there, we'll go ahead and do there. And yes, we are bringing everybody out. All right, here we go. Ironsides versus a four. There's an event. Okay, that's a little bit better. Another event. Not, not oh, wow, this actually, knock on wood, good start. So here we go. Seven versus five, good. Oh, wow. Okay, that was an excellent draw. Sweet. So, two events. Here we go. First event. Hey, good news. It's not red. I get to retain this card. Then, during step four of the battle sequence, play this card to rearrange my four parliamentary musket and pike as I desire. Well, you know what? I'm okay with the way these are. So I'm just going to leave them. So I'm just going to hold on to this card. So we're going to put this up here. No, I'm not. I will actually put it down here as a reminder that I have that in my back pocket. The second event. Uh, you poodle. He's back. Well, add two to Rupert. Well, Rupert's not here. So instead, it's just a plus one to the weakest cavalry, which is going to be here. There we go. Yeah, uh, that... That poodle's going down. Okay, so we have five versus four, six versus three, seven versus five, and then to, you know what? I'm not, I can't spend the zeal point. I think we're gonna just go ahead and go as is. So we'll start off with Ironside. Come on. There we go. There's eight versus six. Ironside gets a victory. Good job. Then Cromwell, six versus three. That, that'll do. Seven versus four. Pros don't ask how much. They ask if you did, and he did. There we go. So then we go seven versus five. Um, that's uh, 12 versus eight. Those two. Well, he goes there and there. So there's a defeat. All right. We need a win. Well, we're at 13 versus 7. I like our chances. It, we're favored, at least. 14 versus... Wait. 13, 14 versus 12. Whew. That was close. There we go. So we got a victory. I'm real, real happy with that. All right? So... They are disordered, first off. That's excellent. And it makes it easier for them to go back. And I get one extra benefit point because there are four units here. So that's going to be an extra zeal point there. Wow. That is, that is good. Um, I needed that. So now we do have to roll for the London trained bands, however, since they were defeated. Oh, well, that didn't last long. They are permanently removed from play. Well, states of siege giveth. The states of siege 
taketh away. All right, well, even though they were defeated, the battle was a victory, so I'm going to say they died heroes. I, I'm okay with that. Oh, ye of little faith. Come on now. It's not over yet. She's tuning. She's not singing. Oops. All right. Okay. So the West advances twice. Well, the West, step one is that, and step two is that. So I'll take that. Then the battles between religious factions of Protestantism grip London and add to the chaos developing there. Puritans refuse to surrender religious control to the Anglicans. So we have a religious reaction and a religious reaction says we're looking at Puritanism and Catholicism here. Puritanism, so if it's in the A or B, drop it. If the marker's in the D or F, bump it. So D or F, that bumps, and that, there we go. Eh, got that off of there, so that's not so bad, I guess, I guess. But dropping it off of B kind of hurt. Uh, social unrest begins in London as various factions form and pamphlet, and pamphlet the streets. Radical groups like the Levelers and the Diggers emerge to gain a voice in politics. Parliament. Losing a little bit of stature there. All right. Yeah, bitter victory is right. Okay. Whew. All right. Do we want a plus one to anything? I think we have to go after the West, first and foremost. I think these are off the board at this point. I think we have to go after the West at least once. The other thing to worry about, though, is Scotland is already at the edge, so anything that Scotland gets, the North gets as well. So here, we're definitely going to do that. That has to happen. That's number one. Number two, so here's a conundrum. If I use the plus one DRM on that and push it back one, I would then like to be able to use the DRM on the Oxford. Now, that doesn't make sense because it's too far gone. So you know what? I think we're going to go ahead and spend that to push the West back, and we'll try it. So we're going to get two rolls on this bad boy. Needing a four or higher. One. <sighs> Back to three. Okay, here we go. Still a number of cards left to go. All right. Well, the Irish advance two. One, two. Not so bad, but there is unrest in London. So there's going to be two rolls made there. They need a five or higher. There's one. That hurt. Okay, that failed. Oh, sorry. 4 January 1642, King Charles attempts to end his troubles with the House of Commons by arresting Pym, Hampton, Halls, Halselrig, and Strode. And attempts fa uh, the attempt fails and a crisis worsens. Then that happens. And now, in an anti-Catholic backlash, Puritans destroy icons and stained glass windows. They use altar stones as paving bricks and protest against soft Puritanism. It's just not right. And then, King Charles brings troops to Parliament to arrest his political foes in violation of parliamentary privilege and tradition. So the monarchy... Drops down, Parliament drops down. Okay, step one, boost that back up. Step two, 
Again, we're stalling right now. I just don't care about this right now. We're going to go with the West again, but we're not going to. So we need a five or a six. Nope. And one more. There we go. Get them off the door stop, uh, doorstep at least. Whew. Resets the three. Here we go again. All right. There's going to be a battle. Good. Except there is some other stuff. March 29, 1644. Outmaneuvered parliamentary forces turn from a retreat to fight a battle, and the victory they achieve puts the royalist forces on the defensive for the remainder of the campaign season. Elsewhere, Manchester is sullen and refuses to fight. But you know what? We'll take our victories where we can. So we have a battle going on over here. Don't forget we have the high ground card so we can rearrange these if we so desire. Um, I don't think so, Anthony. Bite your tongue, sir. Bite your tongue. You know what? We're going to mix things up. Even though it was a victory last time, we're going to mix it up. We're going to put Ironsides over on an unfamiliar side and risk it. All right, here we go. Oh, well, Cromwell looks like a pretty good one there. Rupert's blue coats. It's a pretty formidable musket and pike there. There's an event. All right, good draws. Two events. Now, let me get the order of this right. So for each event here, I get to do this. Then I get to do any green title cards, which is this, if I wish to. So we have two events first. So we will do the first one. It says, I'm going to butcher this, but do a Duke uh, Eigen style. Add uh, plus two to the combat value of the weakest cavalry unit. There we go. And then... Uh, the Duke de Eigen, 1621 to 1686, personified the Fr French aristocrats' approach to war. He was a bold, sometimes rash, decisive, gifted, and independent commander whose glory-seeking gained him major successes as at uh, Rocroy in 1643 and some disasters. Upon his death, King Louis XIV said he lost the greatest man in my kingdom. So, okay. Not good, but not horrible and that damn dog is over there at least oh here we go god made them as stubble to our swords retain this card during step seven of the battle sequence which is here the deadly outcomes play this card after any parliamentary victory to gain two benefit points big victory chance here for us we're going to need this to be able to push back the armies that'd be great oh i didn't mention which army we're going for um now that the west is out here, and the north with the Scottish. We're going to go against the north, by the way. Uh, the above quotation is uh, attributed to Oliver Cromwell after the victory at Marston Moor, in which he killed the damn poodle. July 2nd, 1644. Cromwell commanded the parliamentary left wing of horse, which included his own double-strength regiment of Ironsides. Oh, hey, looky here. He was slightly wounded in the neck, leaving the battlefield briefly to have his wound dressed, but... Like a true, you know, hero. He rejoined the fight, it sounds like. All right. So now I can use this later on if I wish. So high ground. We're looking at eight versus five. I could go eight for, and match them up the same. Whereas I have a decisive side on this side and less so on that side. Whereas I weaken one. No, I don't think I'm going to use it. I think I'm going to leave it exactly how it is. So here we go. We're starting out with Cromwell versus the Strength and Royal, Royalist Cavalry. And there we go. So we're at 9 to 6. Cromwell then helps that side there. Way to go, Oliver. Now we have 5 versus 3. Come on, Ironsides. 
So 5 versus 3, and it's the same, so we're looking at 9 versus 7. Iron sides comes on up, all right? Then we go here, so we're looking at 8 versus 8. Mmm! Yes! Way to go! Guarantees a victory. And that Rupert's Blue Coats goes on down there. Now we got 8 versus 5. Come on! Let's, let's press, fellas. Yes! There we go. Everybody, we're dancing. Okay, and tea break. It is not over. It is not over. And you know what? We'll go ahead and play that as well, I think. So we are looking at three benefit points, possibly as many as five. So the affected army, whew, wow, so much, so much to do right now. What do we do? So if I spent all three, this would actually make this a two. Then I could potentially get plus two. The affected army, I could make it a plus three three to where I can just push them way back. Potentially. One, two, three. Oh, and by the way, because they were defeated, this automatically goes like so. Wow. Yeah, we're going to spend three points for that there. Even though it's about to flip over, I realize, but I'm okay. Do I want to spend this? I don't think I... Do I? Because I can affect this to get it another minus one. You know what? I think we will. Or do we hold on to, or we could get two zeal points as well. You know what? Actually, let's do that instead. Let's get the two zeal points, and I will use it. Desperate times, desperate measures. All right, done. Good fight, boys. Good fight. So the Irish advance one. The Irish move up there. The north advances one, which means they are no longer disordered, but they are down to a two strength. Then, Puritan... Members of Parliament try to get restrictions placed on the newly created Presbyterian Church in London and the eastern parts of London, or of England, sorry. So we get a plus one, oh, DRM on Puritanism, so that should have cleared, but there you go. Then, London train bans morale collapses as unrest sweeps throughout London, which makes sense because I just lost out of the game the London train bans, so why wouldn't there be unrest? So now... We have our first one here, the Devil Tree counters. So this gets put out, and let, because it's the first time, let's go back here. All right, Devil Tree markers. You can always select an undefeated uh, Devil Tree marker in play to campaign against. If you are successful, flip it, and usually it's going to be something beneficial. So we will just go, hey, hell, we'll just go with this. So that will go... Uh, Actually, hold on, that was for campaigning against, but actually putting it out. A moment. There we go. Draw a random Devil Tree marker from the pool and place it on the map wherever you will best remember that you have to deal with it. Well, you know what? We're going to put it right there. Hard to miss that. Um, all right. Then there is Unrest in London, which we will get to here. So, okay, this is card number 24. So that technically happened in Nottingham. So card number 24. Actually, it is... Oh, it says, uh, Manchester is sullen and refuses to fight. So 
that technically would be what that devil tree marker represents, but we're going to put it there as a reminder. So then we have unrest in London, and unrest in London is one, I believe. Nope, it's two. It's two rolls. All right, so here we go. So they need a five or a six. Good and good. All right, so we fought off the unrest in London. We have five points. I really want to address this because the positives of what that could be are, let's go over what those are, a free political die roll, a free siege roll, or next turn, um, it, it, the army will either be disordered or have a minus one strength marker added to it, or it's worth a victory point. I'll address that later. We're going to deal with the Army of the North to start. So that's actually a two, meaning I need a three or higher. Here's one. There's one, moving back there. We'll do it again, needing a three or higher. Good, so he moves back out to there. Before we do anything else, we're gonna try and address the devil tree marker now, needing a three or higher. Got it, so we flip it over and drum roll please. It is free puritanism roll. So let's go ahead and I believe you can save that, or do you do that right away? Let me, a moment. That or any future action phase. Okay, good. So we will actually hold off on the Puritanism. Not getting the plus one might not be a bad idea. So there's that. So we have two more. Did I move this? Shoot. Did I move that for the devil tree marker? I think I did, but I'm not sure, okay? You guys tell me if I moved this when I fought the devil tree marker. Um, you, then regardless of what it is, we're gonna try and flip hull there. So I need a three or higher. Boom, hell yeah. So now I need to know the answer to that. If I did move it, I'm going to try and boost hull. If I did not move it, well, I'm done. Actually, I will probably try and push the north. Or maybe, actually, I may push Scotland up, actually. Okay, Pierre says, pretty sure you did. Okay, then we'll go with that. So I'm going to try, you know what? We're going to push the north because we have the we spent all the uh, the benefit points on that. So we're going to try here three or higher. Send them home, boys. Way to go. A flawless turn all the way around. Could not have gone better. Well done. Mm, that feels good. All right. Cheers. And we still have our free Puritanism roll. And I think I'll wait. All right, so here we go. We are down to the final six cards. And we know what the last one is, even though I don't have it committed to memory, but all right, five cards. Eliminate Star Chamber and regulate Privy Council. May 1641, Parliament was to be summoned at least once every three years. If the king failed to do so, the members could assemble on their own. Requires monarchy at B or higher. So B, okay, one step there. Parliament at B or higher. Well, that's two steps. And petition of the right acquired. Oh, nope, that's up there. So that's unlikely. Reveal the next three event cards in the draw pile and return them face up in any order you desire. Well, if you take a look, if you're doing your math, we know that there are six of these. So one, two, three, four, five. So out of all those, out of the last four card, five cards, one of them is here. But that's unlikely to happen at this point. But we reveal the next one. Here we go. Oh. I will take it. So we have to get rid of one of these, but here we go. Licensing order, June 16, 1643. This order instituted 
pre-publication censorship upon parliamentary England. Milton's Aeropagitica was against this act. I do not support this at all. Just FYI. London at three or higher. It is. Parliament at B or higher. And Puritanism at C or higher. By the way, that should clear. Yeah, that's it. Um, zeal cost two. I get a plus one zeal DRM marker for the remainder of this turn and the next turn for free. Yes. Well, the one that just came out that requires this before I get it, that's not going to happen. This card's going to go out of the game. Licensing order. There we go. Oh, by the way, real quick. Three. Oh, yes. Four zeal points. Here we go. October 23rd, 1641, and three cards left. It's getting tense. The Irish Rebellion of 1641 produces violent clashes between Irish Catholics and Irish Protestants and forces, and forces from England. This civil war would last until the 1650s. All right, the Irish get a plus one, and they move to one. If it now activates, this will happen. It does not. We're not going to worry about that. But it fortifies the fortress of Dublin. All right. The Catholic Church backs Irish rebels against the Scottish Covenanters and English forces. So Ireland drops. That's not good. Plus one to the Irish army. Gugh. So the Irish are actually plus two this round. Needless to say, not going to worry about the Irish this turn. All right, Parliament stops royalist spending in London, closing theaters and banning holidays. Why would you want to stop? Uh, London would provide 25 to 33 percent of all money supporting Parliament's war efforts during the English Civil Wars. Zeal points down one. Wah, wah. All right. Three zeal points. Well, what are, we, what are we looking at? London's at 3, Parliament at B, and Puritanism at C. So, if we were to spend 1, oh, and it re requires 2 zeal points, so I can't even get that this turn, for the extra DRM marker for, for, mm, for the 1 victory point. Honestly, because I know those are the last cards, can't be the priority. Survive at this point. So what can we do? to help us survive. We have three things here. You know what? We can go one and two. Let's see if we want to do that. That protects the north for right now. Probably, probably, knock on wood, for the rest of the game. Here though, here. Yes. I think we spend our last DRM to try and roll a five or six to push the Army of the West back. Come on, five or six. Yo ho ho, that did not go well. Okay, radio. My other card discount. Help. What? Other? Oh. Oh, that's right. The next achievement costs two. So it's. Fr oh. Okay. Now, you know what? Even though I forgot it, maybe in a future turn, thank you for the reminder, Anthony, for this right here. That's why I put it on top. Um, but you know what? Because I saw the result of the roll, we're going to honor that. We're going to leave it as is. So we are currently at three. We get four there. And here we go. We know they're all events, the last three. So here we go. September 1st, 1641, the House of Commons acts to overturn the religious reforms of Archbishop Laud and re replace them with a more Puritan theology. Presbyterians oppose such a move. All right, so the Scottish advance. So the Scottish cannot, so that pushes the North to an advance. I'm okay with that. Besiege or fortify Edinburgh? Well, that goes to there. Okay. Yep, good call, Pierre and Anthony, both of you guys. I appreciate it. I just forgot, but yep. All right, Matthew Hopkins, a witch finder, 
uses the Civil War to bring about England's worst ever witchcraft persecutions. I don't get... Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I live right by Salem nowadays. We had our own here, so... Uh. Reveal the next two event cards, review them, and then replace them face down on top of the draw pile in the same order. We'll do that in a second. And then Pym details First Army Plot, a conspiracy by Royalist officers against the Parliament to free the imprisoned Earl of Stratford and end the Long Parliament. And Monarchy drops one, which cost us a victory point. Er. All right, so it came out to where we get to see the last two cards and prepare for them. That's pretty fortuitous. So the first one is the north and the west will each activate once, and there's a battle. So the battle, oh, I need to clear these. Um, so the bat, that's good for me. Then clubman. So we're going to place a clubman. Um, this actually kind of helps us a little bit there. And then besiege or fortify Oxford twice. Well... It can't, so we'll ignore that. All right, so that's there. And then the very last event is the Scottish are going to advance once and the West are going to advance twice. So we're going to focus on the West, it sounds like. Then I have a choice. I can either cancel Christmas for Puritanism up and Parliament down one or Puritanism down one and a zeal point up. Interesting. And remember, I get my free Puritanism roll there and then the Marty monarchy drops one okay so all right so this actually should be at plus one so we know what's coming now okay so the west is going to advance three times the north once and scotland once which means the north twice and the west three times okay so we need to focus on the west and yeah all right okay so let's see, this should be a strength one because of this. And that's it. So here we go. We're going to spend one zeal point to flip that to a three. Uh, I think. But remember, we have this. So London at three. Parliament at B, which means I would need two of those. Puritanism is at C. Since it's not a memory game and I was allowed to look at it, that might not be terrible to hold off on this. So actually, hold on. What if we did that? Because this card is free. And that would be free this turn, which means I would get the zeal point back. Yeah, let's go ahead and try and get the licensing order. So here we go. So we need a three spending. Oh, so I just, there was four. So for the DRM marker, then that to roll, need a three or higher. Son of a, have to succeed here. Okay, there. And now we need a four or higher. Come on. Yes! Pushes that there. Because now, zeal cost is two less, which is that, which means I get that bad boy, which means I get my one zeal point marker back. I got that for free. So I get a zeal point. So now, with that zeal point, we're going to try... There's nothing else meaningful, I don't think. Because this is going to protect, I think, the north. So yeah, I think we got to try and push the west back. So we need a five or higher here. Ah, failed. But it was a good effort. So we get three, we get four zeal points going into the penultimate turn. Here we go. November 13, 1642. After a series of royalist victories, parliamentary, parliamentary forces defeat King Charles' army and save London. Royalist forces withdraw to Oxford and take up winter quarters. All right, so we have a battle. So here we go. Let's get these bad boys mixed back in.
All right, since we know, since we saw this, we know this is the last battle. All right, I'm going to let you guys choose their cavalry, and you guys dictate. Uh, you know what? I don't think we rolled for this. We need to do that. So hold on before we do that. Oh, he's back in. Okay. So you guys tell me one, two, three, or four for their cavalry, and we'll go for top and bottom in that order. And you know what? That was such a decisive victory last time. We're going to we're going to go ahead and keep that on. Okay, I see a 4 for the cav. I need one more, guys. Okay, well, hey, James. Whew. So four for sure. So there we go. And you one more. Come on. All right, I'll go with two. Here we go. Good call. Oh, Augusto said three. All right, so we'll go with three. Good call there, y'all. Well done. Oof. And, all right. Good job, Augusto. So just FYI, we'll go ahead and show it. So, oh, Prince Rupert. Desmond, whose side are you on anyways? So there we go. That's what we have. So well done, Peanut Gallery. Well done, y'all. All right. So here. All right. Well, that's about as even as you can get for the musket and pike. And remember, I can rearrange these if I wish. No events. You know what? My rolls have been pretty good. Let's roll it. So here we go. I am not going to spend... Am I? I am not going to spend any DRMs. Or any uh, ze zeal points, I mean. So here we go. Come on, Oliver. Well done. Oliver does his job. By the way, goes into retirement undefeated. Just saying. All right. So now we go in for the Royalist Cav versus uh, Ironsides. Old trusty Ironsides. Well done there. A really, really important one here. All right, we got nine versus six. And that's good enough to get it done. So that's going to be 13 versus 11. Boom. And now this only helps for benefit points. Now I'll take them though. Let, let, let's go just a crushing defeat. Nope, wrong way. <laughs> so these guys actually come down here, but they're not named, so it doesn't matter. Four to two, it is a solid victory. Well done, boys. So what do we have here? So they, the routed, so obviously that was going to be the West, as I, as I said. So they are disordered, and now we get one benefit point, and the one benefit point, because we have one more than three, gets us up to there so well done you know it's funny the the bell curve says that the draw will be the overwhelming result but um we drew once and won every other victory well the way to go parliamentary forces all right so there's the battle so now we resolve the north the north advances one from Four down to three. That's done. Then the west advances one, which is that. And now the clubmen have, quote, 
more deeply than many other parts of the kingdom, toasted the mi uh, misery, tasted the miseries of the unnatural intensive war, end quote. Roll a die and place a club mem marker as follows. So here we go. One, in Somerset. And Somerset, the clubman, will come there. And they need to uh, because the clubman happened after this, he's going to have to actually deal with the clubman behind as his activation for next turn, which is fantastic news, by the way. So that's good. Um, make sure it's behind, including behind. I believe they don't want anything, any unrest behind them. So I believe the answer is yes. Um, or having such a, a revolt in its rear. Yep. Excellent job, Clubman, for handling that. And then Charles makes Oxford his new capital and commences improving its fortifications. Apparently, he's done a marvelous job of doing so. King Charles benefits from strong support in the areas west and southwest of Oxford. Well, checks out, right? Besiege or fortify Oxford twice. Well, guess what? Oxford's as far as she'll go, so we ignore it. All right. Awfully, awfully happy to be where we're at here. So what do we do now? Now we're looking at victory points, which is not something I ever imagined myself doing. Now, because of this card, I get the free Zeal DRM. So the question is, where do I want to put it? So looking at this, where can we gain the most victory points? Well, I get a free Puritanism roll. So if I put it there, I could gain potentially three victory points. If I go the other direction, I would gain one Three is harder that way. That's harder that way. Honestly, I think we go Puritanism for this. I think so. I'm good with that. So that's free. And now I will do my free Puritanism roll. That's out of the game. So we need a four or higher. I would say that was a uh, maximizing the, uh, the value of that. And I will do so. So now, that was one roll. Uh, I'm sorry, no. That was free from the chit. Now I will go ahead and try and bump that. Needing a five or six. That was, uh, that two was successful. I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Well, now what do we do? Um, I'll be honest. I can't quite remember what all gets victory points. Uh, let me look at that. Getting fortresses are good. So what can we do here? Well. That's at minus two. Pushing that up doesn't really help me. We could try there. Scotland's a bit ambitious, I think. We could probably try to push both of those up to lose less points up there. So I'm cool with that. So I will go ahead and try and bump the monarchy up, needing a four or higher. Got it. Then I will try and bump up Catholicism, needing a four or higher. Nope. Do it again. Got it. Okay. So now what do we do with our final one? You know what? because that's at minus two no matter what you know what let's try and get the extra victory point needing solely a six there let's do it here we go ho 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 we going to sizzler mm -mm. boom And now, three, four zeal points for the final card of the First English Civil War. There we go. 
November 1644. Parliament offers the king terms for peace, but are rebuffed as Charles's forces have won recent victories. Not in this world. Meanwhile, Cromwell becomes critical of the Earl of Manchester's lack of energy. All right, so Scotland advances one. Well, Scotland cannot, so the North actually advances one instead, which means he gets two shots at Hull, needing a four or higher, fail, and one success, but Hull holds. Then the West advances twice. Well, in the event phase, the first thing they do is recover from disorder, which they don't have, suppress a clubman revolt. Well, they have to do that because it's in their rear, so they will try, they need to roll a two or higher. Come on, one. Nope. Easily with done, but that's one of the activations. The second one advances to there, and then they besiege or fortify Edinburgh, so it just becomes stronger, so be it. Then, Puritans in Parliament act on their pledges in the Covenant to reform the church and attempt to cancel Christmas. That's horrible. All right, so we have a choice here. I may either cancel Christmas for Puritanism plus one, and Parliament drops one, or I can drop Puritanism one and gain a zeal point. Well, oh. That goes away, actually, for this turn. I can't push Puritanism. Oh, actually, if you push all the way up, it actually pushes that up. And that, and that would drop Parliament down one, which doesn't hurt me. Whereas if I drop Puritanism, that costs me a point. Yeah. Let's go ahead and push Puritanism. It's as high as it can go, so it pushes Catholicism up one. Parliament drops down one. Hey, Trevor. Welcome. All right. Then, King Charles rejects peace from a position of waxing royalist military strength, and a monarchy strengthens there. All right. So, we survived, no matter what. They stayed out of London the entire game. Some fortuitous rolling, no, no doubt. So what do we want to do? So we have four points. Um, honestly, I don't think spending the zeal for the DRM makes a lot of sense. I think just pushing these. Or we could try the monarchy for three rolls. One, two, three, and the zeal marker to drop it from four to one. You know what? Let's go ahead and try that. So we'll drop that because this card no longer takes effect. Put that on the monarchy, and we need face value of everything above it. So we need success. Need a three or higher. Success. And for two victory points, here we go. Yeah, nope. Needed a four or higher. Failed. And that's where it ends. Whew, all right. So let's go into scoring now. Okay, so here we go. You will win some, but you will lose. You will probably lose more. The Royalists are pretty tough and cruel necessity and are designed to present a great challenge. All right. So, this being technically we're doing in a scenario, if you will, right? So, at the conclusion of the bronze deck, check your victory point score. So, we actually need to go back to that. And... A moment. Let me actually get to 5.0. Okay, so everything with arrows. So political markers, positive. Uh, achievements. Oh, I guess, and if armies were disordered, 
fortresses and devil tree markers as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and count up all the negatives first and foremost, okay? So the fortress markers, A moment. Okay, they're one point apiece for each fortress marker. So one, two, three, four. And you know what? We'll do it this way. We'll count up the negatives. Do that over here. So negative, positive. So we have fortress, fortress markers, then we have uh, the tracks and achievements. All right. All right. So fortress markers, we're looking at one, two, three, four versus two. Okay, then the tracks. So we're looking here, we'll, we'll go left to right. So negative two, negative five, negative seven. And then on the other side, we have two, four, four. Okay, then achievements, I'm looking at three, four, five, six. And is there anything else that I'm forgetting here? Uh, no devil tree markers out there, no revolt markers out there. Oh, uh, any markers in the four or five areas? which none of which I forgot I could have tried to push them back, but none of them are in their four or five areas. Um, none are disordered. There we go. So we're at negative 11 to positive 12. That'd be plus one. So we then look here and London Ooh, actually, London doesn't have one. You're right. So it's actually a zero. Good call, Anthony. So that's actually fortresses plus one. There we go. It's only the ones with the arrows. So there, 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 and there. So finished at dead zero. So in this scenario, the first Civil War victory, by the way, um, I actually lost. <laughs> It says right here, uh, depending on what the score is, the historical, where it actually ended up, I ended up dead at zero. If it was negative two to positive two, it was a substantive defeat. Whereas I needed to, how could you possibly get 18 or more in this? That's insane. And I rolled well, and I ended up losing. Well, all right. It wasn't a crushing defeat, at least, and I rolled well overall. I, uh, I really enjoyed that. That's a lot of fun. For me, uh, being immersed in the theme helps. Uh, I'm interested in the English Civil War, honestly, because of Mike Duncan's uh, Revolutions podcast. If you guys have not heard that, I would recommend going and checking that out. He did a whole series on the English Civil War that I found fascinating. I found it really, really, uh, I, I, I knew nothing about it until I listened to his podcast, which then uh, turned me on to Unhappy King Charles from GMT Games and made me interested in that. And then getting this, obviously things are well abstracted, but I think it does a very good job of bringing forth how many different things that you're trying to manage and that it's not just about the battles or it's not just about the politics. It's about 
all of it across the board, having dealing with four different armies, six different tracks, plus the battles, plus trying to build up and, and forestall with fortresses and only having limited resources. I mean, this is most games, right, are trying to do that, at least games like this. And I think this game does an excellent job of trying to make you juggle and uh, prioritize as best you can making lemonade out of lemons. And I think the game does that really, really well. Obviously, I was very fortunate on a lot of my roles. Even so, it was still hard. I, I lost the game, technically. So one thing I find really interesting is the majority of these battles were very small uh defeats or victories for either side historically whereas a lot of mine were pretty decisive victories and even so I still lost the game so either that says not a lot about the guy uh, driving the train so to speak or it's just really hard to be able to do all this and I think it's it's a little bit of, of both um, I really enjoyed it and as you guys saw the game it's very procedural which appeals to me it might not appeal to everybody and it has dice rolls galore in it um, but I'm okay with that with this type of game I thoroughly enjoyed it this is something that I am looking forward to playing more of and hopefully you guys enjoyed those of y'all that hung out with me today and had me on in the background doing chores around the house or whatever it is you're doing hopefully y'all enjoyed that as well I certainly did. If you guys do want more of these, let me know either in chat or in, the, especially in the comments below, let me know. But that said, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, so little war gaming, I'm all for it. So there's going to be more States of Siege. There's going to be other series. Eventually, um, I'm not going to promise coin series solo, but you're definitely going to see at some point D-Day series like D-Day at Omaha Beach and, and so on and so forth. Uh, being a Marine and stuff like the one Tarawa also interests me as well. But those are far more complex and I don't have any experience with them yet. So down the road, those will be coming. Stuff like Nemo's War will also be out there. Less war gaming and more uh, solo Euros um, will be happening from time to time as well. That said, if you guys really enjoyed this, I'd appreciate you all hitting the like button uh, and also subscribe into the channel if you guys are seeing this after the fact you see you like what you see then yeah uh subscribe don't forget the little alarm bell let you know whenever we go live and last but not least um it actually is scrolling along the bottom of the screen check out the podcast over on the podcast over on the website heavycardboard.com and last and certainly not least um if you like this channel or you like the podcast you like what it is that i'm trying to do with this tell people that's the biggest thing that you can do to help support the show is tell folks about the show either on social media websites your friends your game group whatever last but not certainly not least a big shout out to the five, 736 patrons who help make this possible and if you like this and you want to go that extra step and support the show i really would appreciate it check it out over on pledgehc.com that said again i'm edward i appreciate it it was a lot of fun I'm glad you guys seem to enjoy it, and uh, I'll catch you all later on next week, okay? Take care, everybody.